Welcome ladies and gentlemen to our longest and wildest Disney cruise ever. What you guys are about to see is the entirety of our 8 night Disney Cruise Line vacation on board the Disney Fantasy in one singular video where we were supposed to go to Bermuda, however Hurricane Lee had other plans in mind for us. In this 3.5 hour long video you're going to see us sail to Cozumel, Grand Cayman, Nassau, and have two days at Disney's private island, Castaway Key. Along the way, we're going to experience a private, all-inclusive beach, snorkeling with sea turtles, multiple medical evacuations, and so much more. So without further ado, I invite you guys to sit back, relax, and come along with us as we set sail on the Disney Fantasy for the next eight nights in the longest Disney cruise vlog ever. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Disney Cruise Vlog series. Today we are boarding the Disney Fantasy for an eight night cruise that was supposed to go to Bermuda. However, because of Hurricane Lee, it got changed to a Western Caribbean itinerary. But either way, despite us not being able to go to Bermuda like we wanted, we're still gonna hop on board and have eight incredible nights of Disney Cruise Line magic. Let's not waste any more time, guys. Let's head on board the ship and have some fun. And don't worry, guys, I am not alone. I'm here with Coda and take a look at this shirt that she has on Royal flush with this cruise She has now set sail on every single Disney Cruise Line ship all within the course of about a year and a half, too Look at you. You're lucky <laughs> And where can you pick up this shirt, babe? Uh, spreadshirt Link down below, right? Yep, link down below. <laughs> <laughs> Our personal spread shop store. If you want to support the channel and you love Disney Cruise Line and you have been on all the ships, go ahead and pick up this ship for yourself and rock it on your next Disney cruise. Before we can get on board the ship though, we do need to make sure that we check in. Make sure you guys have your QR codes out and ready. We have them saved to our phone, so that way they are nice and easy to access. All right, we made it past security, and take a look at that. We have the Silver Anniversary banner. I never thought that I would actually get to see this, but all the crew members here are telling us that this is actually the very last day of the Silver Anniversary. So, we got lucky seeing this. Okay, so we made it into the main terminal. We're just gonna talk over the announcements. We made it into the main terminal. It's just after 12 o'clock right now, and they are flying through the boarding groups. So because our cruise itinerary was changed from Bermuda into a Western Caribbean, a lot of people canceled on the sailing. So I have no idea what the capacity is gonna be on the ship and how many people are actually sailing, but I cannot remember the last time I saw it this empty. This is like almost like post-pandemic levels, like right after cruising restart. This is wild, they are flying through the boarding groups. We're boarding group 12, they're on 17 right now. Let's head on board the ship, guys. As always, guys, make sure you get your photo with the model of the Disney Magic before heading on board the ship. So this is actually our first cruise where we're gonna be using the Disney Band. I know it's kind of blurry, there it is. We're using the Disney Band. So they say that we can actually use this to check in. We don't actually have to show our QR code. <laughs> Under twin powers. Yes. All right, we're walking on board the ship. This was probably one of our fastest check-ins like we've ever had, even especially, with COVID. yeah, even with COVID, that was so quick. That was amazing. <laughs> My favorite part is walking through this tunnel and just getting hit with the smell of the cruise ship. You guys know that Disney Cruise Line smell. It's so, mm, it's so good. All right, your first step on board the Disney Fantasy. All five ships completed. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hello, hello. <laughs> ah, we're back on board our favorite ship. Take a look at Mickey. Yes. Ah, we're back. We're back. My favorite Disney cruise ship. Holy moly. This is the line for dining and Palo reservation changes. Oh my goodness. It goes all the way down there. That's why I always advise, get here as early as possible. Guys, I'm low key freaking out again. We're passing by Mickey's main sail and I don't see my ship model. <laughs> you guys remember on my last cruise in November on the Fantasy, I need that ship model and they didn't have it and I'm not seeing it again. This is actually slightly worrisome. Oh no. <laughs> I don't see the ship model. Oh no. You know what I don't see? What? I could have missed it. Spirit jersey. Oh, yeah, that's very true. It's possible that you missed it. But the good news is, is that we do have another fantasy cruise booked next year for the inaugural sailing to Lighthouse Point. But... Look how tiny the little sweatshirt is with ears. <laughs> that is adorably tiny. <laughs> Target spotted. Take a look at that. They're right there. I only see three of them. So hopefully they have more than that. 
But I found them. Oh, thank God. Uh, take a look at this. We made it to the adult only area. Look at this pool. I'm so excited. Are you excited? We're gonna be spending a lot of time out here. This pool is amazing. I spent so much time out here on my last cruise. Alrighty, so while Flo's V8 Cafe is definitely a viable option for lunch when you get on board the Disney Fantasy, Coda and I, we're looking for something a little bit better. Time to have lunch inside Cabanas. So we're inside Cabanas and look who we ran into, look Magdalena. Oh my gosh, she was our wonderful server the last time we were here on the Fantasy. Thank and you. she instantly recognized us. <laughs> okay, so unfortunately no tables were available, so we are over here at like a bar high top table. But here is our lunch. We have some grilled steak, we have lamb chops. Of course we have a chicken tender, some mac and cheese, we have some noodles. We have some um, other pork steak of some kind, either that or, I forgot what it's called. Either way, it was at the carving station. Have some focaccia bread and of course, some mashed potatoes. And for dessert, we have the Oreo cheesecake and the Celebration Cupcake. Ah, my goodness, what a way to start the cruise. This spot, this like high top table, is actually pretty underrated. Code and I actually like it. It's a great place to people watch, and Code and I love people watching, but the food was incredible. Oh my God. The food is really good. The desserts were amazing. Great way to start off the ship. Now, are you going to get an ice cream now yes. after this? Ice cream cone? Yes. Are you going to get vanilla, chocolate, or swirl? Chocolate. Chocolate? As it should be. <laughs> okay, so we feel like this cruise is actually going to be quite empty. Normally you come out here, what time is it now? Like going on 1.15? It's like 1.15. No one in this pool, hardly anybody in that pool over there. Normally it is swarming with kids and people and there's hardly anybody. This is wild. First ice cream of the cruise. So we made it back down into the atrium just to hang out for a little bit, waiting for the rooms to open up because it is a little toasty outside. I just want to point out that they took down all the 25th anniversary decorations. The last cruise was the very last silver anniversary cruise, so we missed it by just that much. So Donald was over there on the balcony just a little bit earlier and he went away. So now we're kind of taking bets on which character is going to come out next. Coda says she thinks it's Daisy. I think it's going to be Minnie. Hey, take a look at that. It's actually Goofy. We were both wrong. <laughs> Okay, so we're walking through the shutters photo area and I was just thinking about Disney ducks because this area of the ship is a very popular hiding spot for Disney ducks. They like to hide them behind the monitors. Something I was just thinking about, I already struggle with finding ducks on cruise ships. So with the sailing, this like reduced capacity, not really reduced capacity, but you guys know what I mean. With this many cancellations and how much fewer people are on this cruise, it's gonna be way harder for me to find a duck. So if I actually manage to find a duck on my own unassisted over the course of these eight days, I will be very proud of myself. So we're still a little ways away from our mustard drill, but we found our mustard station over here inside the Buena Vista Theater, letter F. So that's nice. We're not gonna be outside sweating our butts off. All right, state rooms are open. Let's find our room. All right, here we are, room 8584. This is a deluxe family ocean view room with veranda. <gasps> There's still 25th anniversary, <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Let's go inside. First things first, gotta lower that temperature all the way down. What do we got? Yeah, I got those for you. I ordered them a while ago. Because I know how much you like snakes. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and do our room tour of room 8584. We're going to start a little bit differently. We're going to start from the veranda and work our way in. So as I said earlier, this is a deluxe family ocean view state room, which means that it is a much larger room. This is actually the largest room you can get before concierge. And it's got a chair over here. We have nuggets sitting down. Some of the deluxe family ocean view state rooms have a, a trundle bed or not a trundle bed, but a Murphy bed that folds up against the wall. We don't have that. We just have an extra chair space. So that's really good. We're gonna be taking advantage of that. We have our sofa over here that does convert into a bed and there is also a bunk bed over here. We have a coffee table over here and take a look at this desk guys. Oh my God, so much real estate over here on this desk. A lot of space for us to put down our stuff. We have some storage space over here. We have a little bit of a cabinet. We have some drawers. Here's our hair dryer. We have some more storage space over here. Definitely no shortage of areas to store your belongings. We have our Castaway Club gifts that we're gonna get into in just a little bit. Over here are the Rice Krispie treats that I ordered ahead of time. Right below the TV, we do have our mini fridge. So you can go ahead and put anything you want to keep cool in there. Some more storage space over here. Those are our room keys that I just put in there. And moving on over, we have our bed. 
a nice big bed. And I want to point out how much space there is to walk over here on this side of the bed. It's very different compared to what we have on the Fantasy where space is really limited when we have the um, TV right here. But I love how much space there is. We of course have our room telephone over there. We have a couple of lamps next to the bed. We have some hangers along the wall over here. Let's go ahead and move into the bathrooms because this is one of the reasons why I love these family rooms and it's partially this right here. So this over here is the shower room. We have a full length mirror on the door. We of course have a sink and take a look at the shower. It is a circular shower with a lot more room to work with and it's got a little seat in here as well in case you need to contemplate your life's choices while you're in the shower. We can say bye bye to the H2O products. Those have been rebranded even though it's like the same basic formula. So you're not really missing out on too much. We have of course some towels over here, makeup rag. We have our lotion and right next door we have our toilet room. It's got a toilet, it's got a sink, some towels, storage space, little trash can. Nothing amazing, but it'll get the job done. Right across the way, we have our closet spaces. We have our hangers. We have our life jackets. There's a safe down here as well as a laundry bag. Plenty of room for storage. And right next door, we have some more closet space, some more hangers, and we have our ladder for the bunk bed in case we do need it. And last but not least, we have our veranda. Koda's already outside taking advantage of it. A decent sized veranda, a little bit smaller than what we had on the Wonder, but it's still a veranda and I'll take it. We have eight nights on board this incredible ship and I am so looking forward to taking advantage of the sunsets out here, sitting outside and just enjoying everything. You excited? I am so excited. You need this vacation? Ready to relax? Yeah. De-stress? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get into our Castaway Club gifts. We have our lanyards over here. We have the platinum and the gold. I know the platinum looks like silver, but we're not gonna talk about that. For the gold members, we have a Castaway Club dry wet bag that we are going to be taking advantage of and utilizing on this cruise. For silvers, we have the It's Time to Cruise Castaway Club bag, very similar bag to what we got on the Disney Wish during its inaugural sailings. And for platinum guests, we have a beach towel. <sighs> okay, now that we're a little settled into the room, we have our bags here. We're gonna do something that we don't normally do because this is an eight night cruise. I wanna make sure that we're not living out of our suitcase the entire time so we're actually gonna unpack and we're gonna start putting stuff away 20 minutes later and with that ladies and gentlemen bags are unpacked everything has been put away let's go ahead and shove this bad boy under the bed let's go ahead and talk about this cruise so originally we were supposed to be on an eight night cruise to Bermuda unfortunately as I said earlier because of Hurricane Lee that is out in the Atlantic it's gonna curve up and it's going to hit the Bermuda area and um, out of an abundance of caution Disney Cruise Line did not want to sail in that so they changed our itinerary to a Western Caribbean cruise so as of right now our itinerary is we have today we have a day at sea then we're gonna end up at Cozumel and then we're gonna go to Grand Cayman we're gonna have another day at sea and then we're gonna have two stops two stops at Castaway Key. This is now a Castaway Key double dip cruise, which is absolutely phenomenal. And on top of that, it's an eight night. So this is a really unique itinerary. Plus on top of that, we're not stopping at Jamaica. Typically with these Western Caribbean itineraries, we stop at Falmouth, Jamaica, and we're not doing that. So that's really interesting. So after those two stops at Castaway Key, we have our final day at Nassau. And as I said earlier, we had a lot of cancellations on this cruise. Just based off of the Facebook group for this cruise, a lot of people said that they were just gonna go ahead and cancel. And someone on the Facebook group earlier today actually asked one of the porters downstairs, and they said that there were 1,500 cancellations for this cruise. So later on today, we're gonna go down to guest services and we're gonna ask for an exact number of how many guests are actually on board this ship. And I'm almost certain that the sail away party is gonna be very telling for exactly how many people are on this cruise, but I'm super excited. We did have the option to cancel for a full refund and because of the itinerary change, they actually did give us $200 stateroom credit to use on whatever we wanted on board the ship. And we also got 20% future cruise credit, which we are gonna be putting towards the Disney treasure, which bookings open up this week while we're on the ship. So I'm very curious to see what it's like booking a cruise while on a cruise especially for something new like the Disney treasure. That's gonna be very interesting to see, but we're gonna put that 20% credit 
on the Disney treasure. So that's going to be interesting. So overall, we were pretty well compensated for the change. And like I said earlier, we did have the option to cancel, but we decided not to. I mean, is it kind of upsetting that we're not going to Bermuda? Yeah, it kind of is because it's the primary reason why we booked this cruise. It was a very unique itinerary and there aren't a whole lot of videos on it. So I wanted to take the opportunity to, you know, cover it off for you guys and to show you what kind of excursions that they have over there, what the overall cruise is like, and what the port of Bermuda is like, you know what I mean? So unfortunately that's not going to be happening, but we still couldn't pass up the opportunity to be on an eight night Disney cruise. And so Cody and I decided to stick with this cruise and we're here now. We're having fun. We're unpacked. We're getting ready now for the mustard drill, which should start in about an hour or so. So we're just going to be chilling here in the room and Coda's off camera right now crocheting. But yeah, I'm just happy to be back, man. The Disney Fantasy, my favorite ship. I love it. <laughs> All right, now that we're in the room, let's go ahead and purchase our internet packages. If you guys will notice, the prices have increased from the last time we were on board. Stay Connected is $18 a day. Basic Surface 28 and Premium Surface $42 a day. I am going to be doing some work and uploading videos, so I'm going to be getting the Premium Surf. For the duration of the cruise, it is $272, and for 24 hours, it's going to be $42. Someone's knocking on our door. Let's go ahead and do the voyage, and we only need one device because we can split it between multiple devices, and we're going to go ahead and buy. Well, it's safe to say that all of Coda's ducks are in a row. She crocheted all of these, and we're going to be hiding them throughout the ship, throughout this entire voyage. Good lord, Coda. Good job, though. They came out looking really nice. She's very happy with them. <laughs> Look at them. All. They're all different colors. I, all... I could be in a whole nother room of the house, and I know exactly what she's doing because I hear... When I put their little beaks on, I go, quack. <laughs> <laughs> that is all I hear, and that's all I've been hearing for the last few weeks as she's been working on these. But she is super proud of them, and she's super excited to hand them out throughout the ship, or to hide them, I should say. <laughs> All right, muster station time. We are in the Buena Vista Theater. Oh, look at that. The screen's opening up. Yay. But we are muster station F. So if you have F on your stateroom key, this is where you're going to be. All right, so we made it up to the top deck so far. Not very crowded, especially down here. Normally it's packed full of people, but you can see the upper decks over here are lined up with people. The sun is baking. It's hot outside. Good lord. But we are all ready for sail away. Disney dreams come true, I'm in style. You're on a dream cruise, here 
They didn't give an announcement, warning, or anything, letting us know that they were going to sound the horn. The it's heck? not as scary as the wish. I love it. The last time we were here on the Fantasy, they didn't sound the horn at all. I was so sad. Come on. Give me some more. More horns. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so mean. <laughs> that gave us a wee startle. Oh, because there's kayakers. Oh, really? <laughs> Go, oh, go, no. go, go, go. <laughs> yeah, they're saying get the heck out of the way. <laughs> Sent all of us into a food panic. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, the police boat is going out there. Leave now. And those two guys. Well then. I was going to say, these two kayakers right here are the ones that made them sound the horn that said, get the heck out of the way. Ah, so long, Florida. Hello, eight night vacation. I am beyond pumped for this. Coda, you're seeing something out there? What are you seeing? Dolphins! Dolphins! Dolphins? Where? I don't okay, see no hold dolphins. On. Watch that spot. All I see is blue. Oh, I see them. I see them. I see them. I don't know if the camera can see them, but I see them. Yeah, they're out there chilling. Yeah, look, there they go again. Okay, how big of a nerd are you? What are these again? These are moon jellies, but because they're from warmer waters, their sting hurts more. Um, northern moon jellies, because of the colder water, for whatever reason, their sting doesn't hurt as bad. My marine biologist, everyone. <laughs> she looked down and she saw all the jellyfish, and again, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there are a lot of jellyfish in the water, and some pretty big ones, too. Yeah. Like, the fact that we can see them clear as day from the ship means that they are massive. And uh, Koda was just out here spitting some knowledge. <laughs> Whew. Okay, so we just got back to the room from Sailway. That was very exciting. It's really hot outside, so we're kind of hanging out in the room for just a little bit. But I want to show this. Look what we got delivered. This is our platinum gift. So as a platinum, you can have a choice of either like a Prosecco or a non-alcoholic beverage, a fruit basket, or some chocolates to be delivered to the room. So we chose the non-alcoholic option which is Cloudem Blue, 0%. So this is like a cider and it's non-alcoholic and it's really cool when you actually pour it in a cup. And I'm excited for Coda to try it. I've actually personally never tried it either, but we'll go ahead and try it now. Okay, so fun fact, I've never actually opened one of these before. So uh, we're gonna give this a try now. There's gotta be a pull tab somewhere, yeah, there is. 
I mean, in theory, it's not alcoholic or anything, so it shouldn't pop, right? Is that how that works? No. No? Oh. Carbonation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Science. You take that off. And actually, um, let me grab a shirt or something. Actually. Uh -huh. This is what I see them do. It's working. Ha ha. Yay. Got it. Oh, I'm at the end. What are you trying to do? Oh, is it glittery? Oh, it is glittery. I forgot to shake it a little bit. But take a look at that. Look at that. All right, here's to a good cruise. Cheers. Pink. All right, Coda's gonna fight the crowds for, oh, hi Pluto. <laughs> Coda's gonna fight the crowds for the merchandise. This, this way, babe, the other way, that way. <laughs> I love you, bye. And now it is time to have dinner at Enchanted Garden. All right, I have made it to Enchanted Garden. Coda is fighting the crowds at the store and I have made it to table 61. All right, we have our menu for Enchanted Garden. Let's go ahead and check it out. All right, we have our specialty cocktails on tap. For our appetizers, we have a prosciutto, mozzarella, and tomato bruschetta, smoked salmon, carpaccio, fried calamari, heck yes. We have a chicken um, bastilla. <laughs> for our soups and salads, we have a clam chowder, a couscous salad, chilled mango, and papaya soup, and an arugula and baby spinach salad. We also have our bread service down here as well. For our main courses, we have a uh, penne arrabbiata, pan seared halibut. We have grilled chicken breast, a beef a pork wellington. We have a strip loin as well. Here are your vegetarian options and your lighter note offerings. All right, she's a little beaten and bruised, but she survived and she has returned from shopping. Do you want to do a quick um, little um, merch haul? Show us what you got. Got his boat. It's all boxed up. Um, his fantasy is missing. Not my spirit jersey. It's so cute. Dumbo. Awesome. It's your goal to collect the spirit jerseys from all the ships, right? The dream. Just like it's mine to get all the ship models, which I finally have now. Thank you so much, babe. And the ears and the matching. Backpack. Oh, you also got the ears. Look at that. That's adorable. Wow, take a look at that. I like it because it's got all the other, everybody else too. Oh yeah, it does. That's really cool. That's awesome. How much was the bag? Honestly, I was expecting like $80, $90. It was $78. Oh. So I was expecting it to be like a flat 80 or more. Yeah, so. and plus you got your 10% discount mm -hmm. for being gold. So not bad. Good job, baby. And our appetizers have arrived. I have the fried calamari. And Coda got the prosciutto, mozzarella, and tomato bruschetta. Okay, so the soup has arrived. And I was a little confused because I did order clam chowder. This isn't clam chowder. <laughs> this is the, um, the what is it, babe? Because you got the same thing. Uh, mango and papaya soup. Mango and papaya soup, yeah. It's basically a smoothie in a bowl. Yeah, it ain't for me. <laughs> it ain't for me. Coda seems to like it, though she's doing her little head bobble thing. That means that she likes it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm gonna see if I can get my, my clam chowder. Okay, let's try this again. Here is the clam chowder. <laughs> they put some cracked pepper in there as well. All right, our entrees have arrived. This is the grilled strip loin with cheddar cheese and onion smashed baked potato, roasted green asparagus, tomato, and a red wine juice. Both Coda and I got the same exact thing and I am excited to dig in. Alrighty, the dessert menu has arrived. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. And as always on the first side, we have our specialty drinks and coffees. And over here we have our desserts. We have a Kahlua creme brulee, dark chocolate bombay, warm sticky fig, and pecan pudding. We have a Magical Express Sunday for the signature dessert. We have a mango mango marble cheesecake in our no sugar added, a fresh fruit saboyan. Don't know how to pronounce that properly, but there you go. Dessert has arrived. I have a vanilla sundae with fudge and brownies. And Coda got the Kahlua creme brulee. Wow, guys, take a look at this. 
I know I say this practically every cruise, but it's views like this. This is why I love cruising so much. It is gorgeous outside. It's beautiful. There's nothing but us in the open ocean. Okay, so first night dinner at Enchanted Garden. What did you think? That was pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah, I enjoyed it. While Enchanted Garden isn't my personal favorite restaurant, just aesthetically pleasing, like if the Disney Fantasy or the Disney Dream were to ever go into dry dock and they were to overhaul one of the restaurants, Enchanted Garden would be my first pick to get an overhaul and a complete retheme. But the next time we're in Enchanted Garden, I'm very excited because that's when we have the Ahi Tuna Tower and the Prime Rib. It's gonna be amazing. We have made our way over into the tube for some Movie Tunes trivia. Now, typically with these types of trivias that are non-Disney, we don't do the best, but we're still gonna give it a solid try and have some fun. We also wanted to check it out because it is adult only, 18 plus in here for this trivia. So it should be fun. These adult only events, you know, tend to get a good, tend to get a good laugh going. Now, I will say, normally, if you've ever seen me before, I have the attention span of a goldfish. But right now, all I can think about is how my back is on fire and cold all at the same time. And guess what? It's not even on the bit that hurts. So that's... I couldn't quite reach the bit that I needed it on. I was like, next to it will be fine, right? <laughs> so, we are going to get started. Here it is, song number one. There we go, that's movie tune number one. All you got to do is write down the name of the movie. There we go, that's movie tune number one. Who thinks they've got that one right? <laughs> Who thinks they've got that one not right? <laughs> then strap in everyone, because that's the easiest one. <laughs> Moving on to movie tune number two. Ooga chaka, ooga, ooga, ooga chaka, ooga, ooga, ooga chaka, ooga. Okay, moving on to movie tune number three. Moving <laughs> on to song number four. <laughs> Everybody, wow. Oh. Song number four. Now, I do want a specific one. Moving on to movie two, number five. There we go, that's movie two, that's number five. <laughs> you had me worried there for a second with the look that you gave one me. One more time, <laughs> here it is. Okay, so we just got done with Movie Quotes Trivia. We actually didn't do bad. Out of 15, we got 12. So honestly, I'll take it. The winners got 15 out of 15. So yeah, they're absolutely nuts. <laughs> but overall, not bad. Where to next? The room? All right, let's go to the room. Okay, so because Coda made so many ducks, I get the opportunity to hide my own duck. So here is one that Coda made. It is red and black with a little bit of pink on top, but we're gonna go ahead and hide this one in the tube and we will have several more to hide throughout the cruise. So consider this your duck of the day segment. <laughs> and are you hiding one as well? I don't know where yet, but... That is an adorable one. <laughs> so I decided I was gonna hide this duck somewhere in the tube and I do believe that I'm going to be hiding it back here, a little out of the way but I think that he will do just fine right here if he would just stay put. Stay, stay put. Don't lean forward, my friend. That's perfect. Right there. Look at that. You're chilling. He's not super obvious, you know, if someone comes back here, you know, from a distance. He's not super noticeable. You have to... You have to, you know, you have to be looking. On our way back up to the room, we're crossing through La Piazza. We have a couple of musicians in here. They're doing some singing, which is awesome to see. Made our way back into the atrium. You can see we have the line of guests waiting to get into Royal Court for dinner. We have some photo sessions going on. We have Captain Minnie down there. We have a couple photo backdrops back there. Got Goofy meeting up here. 
Very lively this evening. I love it. See, that's the thing about Disney Cruise Line. You never know who you're gonna run into. We're just walking over to the elevators and Snow White just walks in front of us like, what? You never know. All right, we're making our way back to the room. What towel animal do you think we have? First night, take your bets. I say dinosaur. Oh my gosh. Oh, I can't think of anything. <laughs> Literally besides, anything. Besides Davy Jones, I know it's not Davy Jones. A dog. There we a go. dog? Yeah. A dog. Okay, a dog. I say a bear, she says a dog. Let's see who is correct. So you said a dinosaur. I did say a dinosaur, did I not just say you just dinosaur? Said bear. Uh, whoops. Okay, well, bear was on my mind. I don't know. It's definitely not a dinosaur, though. I think it's a penguin. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? It can looks you... sad. Whatever. It, it does is. look sad. Okay. Well, I mean, you guys can let me know down in the comments what you think that is. That looks like Basset Hound. Basset Hound. Does it not? No. <laughs> okay, I'm thinking just the head though. Okay. Yeah. the The head I can kind of see, but huh? Your mind goes to Basset Hound. <laughs> does it not? Uh, a little bit from the side, you know, with the floppy ears, well, I and guess. And, like, from this angle, because this looks like an eye. Like, you know. Okay, I <laughs> can... I'm just going to put a picture in over here so you can get a little bit of a comparison. You guys can let me know. What do you think this is? All right, we went back to the room for just a little bit to relax, use the restroom, and change. We're going back down to trivia in the tube. It is know-it-all trivia, and once again, it is 18+. plus. I love those adult-only trivias and activities. And we are going to spend our evening at the pool. That's something that we're trying to do more. We're trying to spend a lot more time at the pool. It's incredible what a 20 minute difference can make. We weren't in our room for that long. You saw how many people were down here and how lively it was. And now look at that, empty. We made it back into the tube for know-it-all trivia. Much lighter crowd, so who knows? We may have an actual fighting chance. Okay, but here we go. Number one, who did White Earp call the most dangerous man alive? All right, number two, what male tennis player won at least one Grand Slam singles title every year from 1993 to 2000? Are you ready for number three? Yes. Yeah. One person is ready. Okay, I, just read, I just read it for you. I don't need the mic. Okay, so, so. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here we go for number three. What does the Q stand for in the acronym NASDAQ? N-A-S-D-A-Q. What does the Q stand for? Anyone three of three? Maybe? No. No? I'm Owen three right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to learn. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, Alright, this is your number four. Maybe you get this one. Which US company founded in 1907 affectionately calls its employees brown shirts? Number five says, what instrument plays the A note that a symphon symphony orchestra tunes to? Alright, you're gonna get number six. Here we go. I promise you're gonna get number six. Here we go. Okay. Number six says, how many times does the average human blink in a minute? Five, 15, or 25 times? We did great. That was brutal. <laughs> the most random, off the wall questions you could ever imagine. Out of the 25 questions that were asked, we got seven right, and one of them was a gimme. Like, it just proves that we don't know anything. <laughs> I feel so dumb. But that was still a lot of fun. The host that we had, he was incredible. I can't wait to spend more time with him throughout the rest of the cruise. That was a lot of fun. What did you think? It was fun. Even though we got our butts handed to us, it was still a lot of fun. All I right. Mean, the what? winning team didn't have 25, though. Yeah, that so is I true. I feel totally stupid. I mean, they still got 16, though. They we just had. not. She's a glass, glass half full kind of girl. Like, I mean, I could be stupid. <laughs> All right, guys, enough talk. Let's go upstairs and hang out by the pool. Okay, so I'm not shaming you, but this is day one, and this is ice cream number what now? Hello. Three? Four? It's number three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting ice cream, but you know what? As long as you're happy. All right, we made it up to the cove. We're going to spend some time in the adult pool. How are you feeling, baby? You excited to go in the pool? Like a toddler <laughs> eating her ice cream. <laughs> 
Oh gosh. <laughs> One eternity later. Whew, well, that was a very relaxing time in the pool. We did close it down. They're getting ready to close it on up and put the netting around it. But that was so relaxing. The only downside to this pool is that when you're hanging out in here, it's right in front of the door that goes inside. So anytime that door opens, you get a blast of cold air. So it's very easy to feel a little chilly in there. But during the day, it actually feels a lot better because it's actually nice and hot outside. But right now, the temperature is great. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to dry off, number one. And number two, we're going to go back down to O'Gill's because they have a late night snack bar. And we want to check it out. Coda, I think, has never actually seen it. So we're going to go down there, check it out, maybe grab some snacks, and then go back to the room. All right, take a look at that. That's Snacks have been put out over here in La Piazza. We have brie on crostini, raspberry and candy pecan. We also have asparagus prosciutto on sun-dried tomato. We also have some jalapeno poppers. We have some beef empanadas, vegetable samosas, and chicken satays. Ah, one last look at the atrium as we make our way back up to the room and end off day one. So we just left the room and we found this. What in the world? Animal story? Big, go ahead and do the honors. What in the world is this? What's it say? Uh, I love your channel. I'm not great at meeting people, but wanted to say I'm excited to be sharing this cruise with you. Congrats on your engagement. Since I'm too nervous to say hi, please accept one of our cruise ducks to keep or hide while Aww. out and about. Happy cruising. Maybe I'll be brave and say hi at some point. Ray. Room 6616. Okay, 86, so we need- 8616. 8616, I'm dyslexic, okay, I'm sorry. Um, so we need to make a note and we need to leave it on their door in case we don't see them. But that's awesome, thank you so much. If you're watching, I'm sure you're watching the video, but thank you so much, that is adorable. Oh, he's got a little hat. <laughs> oh my God, look at him. You guys already know the drill, sea days means busy times out on the pool deck. All right guys, breakfast is served. We have some eggs, we have some biscuits and gravy sausages, Mickey waffles, and eggs benedict that looks kind of botched, and we have some hash browns. Guys, you would be so proud of me. <laughs> Take a look at that. I found one. It says, oh, what luck. You found a duck. Keep her hide. You decide. That is so cool. It doesn't have a family name. Actually, no, on the other side. Let's see. Let's see. The fantasy. The Sands family? What is that? Yeah, the Sands family from Florida. I had to look outside of the lens. Let's see, take a photo and post on social media using Disney Cruising Ducks. That's so cool. Yay, I found a duck. Coda's gonna be so happy. All right, babe, who are we in line to see? Stitch. And you purposely brought your angel onesie. Look at you, you're adorable. <laughs> Oh, that is adorable. Thank you guys so much. While we do have a quick second, let's go ahead and walk inside Mickey's main sale and take a look at some of the brand new merchandise. This is exclusive to the Disney Fantasy. We have some Fantasy Lounge Flies. We have a gourmet chocolate truffle collection. That's very interesting. We, of course, have our Disney Fantasy mugs. Those aren't new. We have some brand new Disney Cruise Line magnets. That's really nice. And we have some special Disney Fantasy ears. A lot of this stuff you saw actually yesterday when Coda got back to the restaurant. But these ears are really cute. And I love this button-up shirt. It's got all the different ships on it. Unfortunately, a little too expensive for me. But you know what? It's awesome. Hopefully one day they come to the outlets at some point. That way I can afford it. But this is really nice. And take a look at these bottles over here. They have all the different cruise ship characters on them. <laughs> on the cap, it's a, it's a ship. There you go, look at that. That is adorable. <laughs> and then what are these? What'd you call these, tea lights? Tea lights, yeah. I don't know what tea lights are, but. Tiny lights you put in jack lanterns. Oh, okay. Oh, that's what that's for. You got a little hidey hole in here. We have some new Disney Cruise Line journal sets over here. These are really nice got some binding on it. Ooh, take a look at that. These hats are brand new, where magic meets the sea. It looks like a little captain's hat. All right, we made it back to the room. We're chilling out on the veranda. There's Key West over there. You can see it barely in the camera, but we also have a boat coming for us right here. There's a small boat heading our way. 
Now we did hear online that Key West, the channel is actually too shallow or too small for the Disney Fantasy to pull into. So they're going to have to tender the passenger off the ship in order to get them to Key West. So maybe this is the tender right here or maybe it's a police boat, an escort. I have no idea. But either way, things are going to get very interesting very soon. Well, it turns out that's just a random fishing boat. <laughs> We figured it was too small to be like a tender or anything, but, huh, very interesting. They're passing just right behind us. We do have another boat approaching us right now. It looks like a Coast Guard boat. Don't know where the tender is or if that's the boat that's going to be taking the passenger. I don't think so. They turn around and they are coming back towards us. Huh. The ship has completely stopped. Well, almost completely. We're still moving slightly, but yeah, these may be the guys that are going to take the passenger off. Kona did make a good observation. We are rotating ourselves so that way we can swing our butt around to them. But they're moving now too. I don't know. Either way, we're rotating. In other news, I don't know how well you guys can see, but we do have some jellyfish down here. They're very big, very apparent too. Yep, it's definitely medical. They have the blue safety gloves on. Yeah. And with that, they're done and they're moving. Hopefully everything works out. Hopefully it's nothing super serious. I certainly hope everything works out for this guy. This is uh, Captain Michele speaking from the bridge. I want to take this opportunity to provide you with an update on our itinerary. Our guests were successfully disembarked and we wish them a speedy recovery. Currently, we are proceeding to our destination, Cozumel. Thanks to an efficient operation for this evacuation, we do not anticipate any delay in our arrival in Cozumel. Huh. I repeat, we do not anticipate any delay in our arrival in Cozumel. Nice. Thank you very much for your attention. Back to the tube for some adults only trivia. First one for your villain sports trivia. Remember, I need the character and the movie. Okay? Number one, it says, DJ, I like that. Do you know I do? <sighs> Put it on my luggage. Let's go to number two. Are you ready for number two? Yeah. 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 I don't know, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said yes. Who was it? I'm sorry. One strike. <laughs> 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 number two says, Ha, ah, you have a spirit for one so small. Number three, number three says, So, Fagan, did we bring something green and wrinkly to make sights happy? All right, let's jump to the next one. Number four, we own ourselves. We are masters of our own fate. We control our own destiny. Number four, no, no, number five, sorry. Number five says, Temper, temper, woman. You ain't seen my temper. All right, number six, I know this one. It says, Remember me. Okay, so remember when we were on The Wonder and we swept the Villain Quotes trivia on there? We got a perfect score, 25 out of 25 on that one. No. <laughs> we, we did horribly this time. Out of 40 points, because we needed both the villain and the movie, we had 25 out of 40. Ouch. <laughs> the winning team got 36, but still, that was a lot of fun. And the uh, entertainment team on this cruise is amazing. They are phenomenal. I love them to pieces. So we have about 20 minutes until our next trivia, which is adults only, which is going to be Heroes Quotes trivia. Hopefully we do a little bit better with that one. All right, so we had a little bit of time before Hero Quotes started. So, babe, what did you get? Um, I've got some sauteed shrimp, tacos, uh, potato pancakes. There's ravioli in here. And dessert. Hmm, really good. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Number one. Yo, Rockman, haven't seen you in a few millennia. Give me some tassel. Number two, most everyone is mad here. Number three, if you weren't you, then you'll all be a little bit less we. Number four, there's the whole world at your feet. Number five, yes, I'm sorry but my autofill is a touch aggressive today. Well, unfortunately, we're leaving the tube empty-handed. We didn't win either trivia. Both of them were actually quite difficult. I thought we would do better. So something that Coda and I, we love to do is we love to walk the hallways and look at people's doors and their magnets, but I just gotta stop and admire these. 
like clearly these were made before we got word that we weren't going to Bermuda. So there's that. There's also this one over here. They crossed off Bermuda. Oh no, <laughs> these poor guys. But I like and, how they updated it though. Yeah, they do have an updated one over here. They're yeah, updating it too. Her. But wow. Shout out to these guys. They put a lot of effort into their door. And they even have pixie dust for people, so you can walk by and grab a lollipop if you want. This is awesome. And <laughs> the, the Bermuda crust stuff is just too funny. So ah, it's so nice to come back to a clean room and freshly made bed. Something that I heard you don't get on Royal Caribbean anymore. They don't do midday service anymore. I mean, I'll take a nap anyway. Like, so it doesn't hurt me. Like, it still gets turned down by the end of the night, right? Yeah. Yeah, like... It's still a nice touch that I admire that Disney does. Yeah. Later. Woo. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we are back. I know it's only been a couple of seconds for you, but it's been a few hours for us. Um, Code and I, we returned to the room. We took a little bit of a nap, and then we went to the pool. We did some relaxing over there in the adult-only area, and now it is almost time for formal nights. We got back to the room. I threw my other clothes back on because, as per usual, I need to go and iron my shirt for a formal night. So we're going to go ahead, take care of that, get dressed, and then... Then we have dinner at Royal Court tonight. I'm super excited for that. We're going to have our escargot, our deep fried brie. It's going to be amazing. But before that, we have the welcome reception where we have the opportunity to get some free alcohol. So let's not waste any time, guys. Let's get our shirt ironed and let's get this night started. All right, Coda and I are all dressed up in our formal wear and we are ready to go. Take a look at Coda's outfit, by the way. Look at that. A Cinderella inspired dress. I haven't seen this in a while. She last wore it very early on in our relationship, right? Yeah, we went to uh, Be Our Guest. Yeah, we went to Be Our Guest and we took some pictures at Magic Kingdom. Really nice. Is that, isn't that a child's dress too? Like a kid's no. dress? No, I thought no, it was. No, this is a dress shop. So ah. It should have been like 250 bucks, but I got it at the outlet. Thrift shopping. Well, not really thrift shopping, but smart shopping. There you go. And take a look at that. She has the silver heels on too. Looking very cute. We have made it into the atrium and take a look at that. Minnie is up there in her formal outfit. It's peacock inspired based off of the floor patterns over here and the overall aesthetic of the Disney fantasy. Definitely one of my favorites. Everyone is out here in their formal outfits and now we just need to find the alcohol. There are people walking around with some drinks. Dakota seems to have identified one. Let's go grab one. Hello. Yes, please, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. All right, there you go. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> All right, time for dinner at Royal Court. We made it inside Royal Court. Let's see what's on the menu. All right, over here we have our specialty drinks for appetizers, duck confit, Gaston d'Escargot, iced lobster and jumbo shrimp, and a breaded deep fried brie. Here are the soups and salads. We have a French onion soup. We also have a permentier, which I don't really know what that is still. We have a couple of salads and our bread service. For our main courses, we have a pasta. We have an almond baked salmon royale. We also have a duck breast. We have roasted rack of lamb and a roasted filet steak. And here are your vegetarian and lighter note offerings. I didn't show this off earlier, but the bread basket, it's actually a carriage. <laughs> it looks like Cinderella's carriage. I love it. We already tackled a lot of the bread, but it's still a nice little detail. All right, one of our appetizers has arrived. This is Gaston's Escargot. In case you guys don't know, that means snails. And next up, we have a personal favorite of mine, the deep fried brie. Our soup course has arrived and we have the French onion soup. Now, I know I didn't mention this in yesterday's video, but it should be noted. For my food reviews when it comes to cruising, unless I say otherwise, the food is good. I will go out of my way to let you guys know if I don't really care much for something. So like I said, if it's bad, I'll tell you. If I don't say anything, then it's good. Other than that, I just want to show off the food. All right, our entrees have arrived. This is the oven baked salmon royale. King smoked salmon with horseradish crust, accompanied by sauteed Swiss chard truffle 
cauliflower puree and white wine beurre blanc. I get this because of the truffle. It reminds me a lot of the black truffle pasta that you can get at Animator's Palette. Definitely one of my favorites. And over here, I went with the duck breast. Now, I got the duck breast just on its own because the last time I had duck breast on the Magic, it wasn't that good, so I really wanted to give it a shot on the Fantasy. Okay, so I finished the duck breast, and yeah, 10 times better over here on the Fantasy than it was on the Magic. Everything was amazing. The dessert menus have arrived. They're shaped like invitations to a ball. Let's take a look inside. As always, to start off, we have our specialty drinks on the top. And down here, we have our desserts. We have the Grand Marnier Souffle, an apple tart tatine. We have the creme brulee, a strawberry shortcake sundae for a signature. We have a classic opera jateau, don't know what that is, and a duo chocolate slice. And in typical French restaurant fashion, we have our souffle and our brulee for dessert. Toda got the same thing. Always gotta get two. Well, how awesome is that? They came and gave us a congratulations cupcake for our engagement. They sang us a little song and everything. That's so awesome. <laughs> oh my God. I'll tell you guys what, other than Palo brunch or dinner, first night at the French restaurant, whether it be Royal Court, Palace, Lumiere's or Triton's, first night here is always where I eat the most because there are so many great things on the menu that I personally enjoy. And, you know, you have to get it. It's your one night to get it. I mean, yeah, technically you could get it another night, but the other restaurants have such good menu items as well, but not as many as what they have over here. My personal favorite. I love it. I'm really, really full right now. I'm definitely not gonna be eating for the rest of the night, but, oh man, that was great. I also gotta hand it to Coda. I thought that I ate a lot. She put in the work. She had both of her desserts. She had a creme brulee and a souffle. And I didn't even finish my souffle, so she switched mine and finished it. And she also ate the majority of the congratulations cake. Good job, babe. <laughs> my girl can eat. <laughs> All right, so it's very possible that we don't have a towel animal yet, but what do you think it is if we do have one? A monkey. A monkey? Okay, I'm gonna say a bear. Yeah. Let's see. What is that? I can't tell what that is. Is it a turtle? It looks to me like a turtle. It's a turtle. <laughs> you like turtles. I do like turtles. And chocolate. Okay. <laughs> Time to head on inside the Walt Disney Theater for our first show of the cruise. <laughs> Take a look at Daisy in her formal outfit. It almost looks like a flapper outfit. It's very adorable. And then of course we have Minnie up there in her formal outfit as well. We saw Chippendale earlier, but I didn't get them on camera. <laughs> Hello. Okay, made it back up to the room for just a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and change out of our formal clothes and put on some more comfortable clothes before we head on down for some adult entertainment. Something that I want to just touch on, a little you know, cruise line etiquette. If you're waiting at an elevator bank, be courteous and let the people who are waiting there first get on the elevator first. I know there's multiple elevators, but if you see someone there before you, just say, hey, elevator's here, you can go first, you were here first. Don't just bum rush the elevator if you're coming up behind people. You know, there's a group of people waiting and then you have people with strollers who are coming in very last minute and like as the elevator opens, they're just running over there to try and get in there. Just be a little patient, it's fine, I mean, there were a lot of people waiting, so we did end up having to go down to go up, but still, like, just be courteous. Let people who were there first go. You'll get your turn. Anyways, rant over. We're gonna have a fun rest of the night. We're gonna go ahead and get changed and go back down to the tube. We are all showered and ready to head on down to the tube. Let's take a look at some of the food that's in the adult-only area tonight. This looks really, really good. Some more vegetable samosas. We got some pot stickers, vegetable spring rolls and sausage rolls oh my goodness <laughs> all right we made it down into the tube ready for some adult crazy karaoke
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Disney Fantasy and welcome to day three of our Disney Cruise Line vacation. We are docked here in Cozumel, Mexico, and we're getting off the ship today to go to an all-inclusive beach resort. <laughs> Thanks to our friends Steven and Jalen over at Good Morning Adventures, they recommended that we go to Paradise Beach Resort. Now, this is an all-inclusive resort that has unlimited food, unlimited drinks, it's on a beach, it even has a water playground area, so it looks to be a lot of fun. In our scramble to find something to do in Cozumel, since Bermuda got cancelled, uh, this is something that we discovered and we heard it from them, so we're excited to check it out for ourselves and let you guys know if it's worth your time and money. But first, we're going to head on upstairs to Cabanas, grab some breakfast before heading off the ship. All right, ladies and gentlemen, breakfast has been served. We have some eggs, we have some potatoes with onions, hash browns, our sausages, of course, the glorious Mickey waffles, and an eggs benedict. Pretty standard for what I normally get, but still just as delicious. And welcome to Mexico, baby. It's your first time here, right? <laughs> How's it feel? Eh? <laughs> it's Mexico. <laughs> But as you get off the ship over here in Cozumel, you get a beautiful view of the very front of the ship where it says Disney Fantasy. It's absolutely gorgeous. And take a look at this, guys. As you get off the Disney Fantasy and you walk down the pier, you have a great opportunity to grab some phenomenal pictures of the ship. So it'll be a great spot for family photos. So we made it up the escalators and around, and right before you hit the exit, you have a lookout area over here where you can get another phenomenal view of the ship. Arguably, this viewpoint is even better than down there on the pier. So in order to get out of the main port area, you do need to go up the escalators and walk by a bunch of stores. All the owners are gonna be outside, and they're gonna be asking you to walk inside the stores. They're gonna be offering you different things. Just kindly say no thank you or no gracias, and you will be totally fine. All right, guys, that took a little bit of time, but we finally made it over here to Paradise Island. We took a taxi over here it was about $22 from the ports where the Disney Cruise Line ship docks we got here we paid the rest of our deposit because when you book online you pay half now and half later when you get here so we paid the other half when we got here now we have someone escorting us over to the beach where we can grab our chairs or we could start at the pool if we wanted to but Coda really want to start at the beach like I said, all of our food, all of our drinks are included. The only thing that isn't included are like the premium alcoholic beverages, which I'll leave a link to the website down in the description below if you guys want to go ahead and check it out. But so far, this place is really nice and it's nice and empty. There's only one ship in today and that's us. So we should have the entire place practically to ourselves. Oh my gosh, guys, check out how empty it is. We have our own personal, um, I don't want to say butler, but he kind of is our butler. He attends to us. We only have a couple of people here on the beach with us. They gave us our own little section right here. This is really nice. We have the bar back there. There are restrooms, there are showers and changing rooms. He's about to bring us our menu right now. Coda found a friend. <laughs> what do you got there, babe? A little hermit crab? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yep, there he is. <laughs> You're so cute. All food included as many times you want it. All drinks, all included too. About the last page, the bowl of wine, champagnes, and shots, that's on the top shelf, okay? That's okay. optional, that's the other one, it's all included. All righty. So I'll be your server wherever you want, wherever you need, they just let me know, I'll take care of you. All right, thank I'll you so much, Thomas. I'll be your best friend today, I'll be your best friend. I appreciate it, my man. All right, guys, first round of food has arrived. Coda is biting into her tacos right now, but we did get Mexican pork tacos. You can see there's a little bit of uh, guacamole on there, or no, av avocado. We have a radish and some pico de gallo, it looks like. Really good, and I got a pina colada. Coda got a strawberry margarita. You happy so far? Mm -hmm. I also did pay 10 extra dollars to get Coda onto the floaties out there. So she's got her wristband, she's ready to go. One thing to note is that online, those extra fun wristbands are $18, but you get here and they're 10. So if you know you wanna buy one, just wait till you get here. All right, baby, you ready to go into the water? Yes. You had your tacos and you had your drinks? All right. Later. All right, we made it back in from the water. That was a little bit of a workout, especially for Coda. She was the one who was climbing up all over the the uh, in 
inflatables out there and it was really fun now i did say it was ten dollars to go out there and to use the inflatables however there's no one really checking to see if you have a wristband so just bear that in mind if someone says anything then you got to buy a wristband but i see a few people out there without wristbands but anyways um going in the water is actually free you don't need to pay to actually go into the water but we're back now we were in there for about 30 minutes had our fun coda got exhausted now we're going to order another round of food another round of drinks and then maybe a little bit later we'll head on over to the pool and check that out round three of drinks another pina colada and what you Sunset. A sunset? Do you know what's in it? Pineapple, grenadine. I don't know. Pineapple, grenadine, and I don't know. Either way, sounds good. We're enjoying it. All right, our food has arrived. We ordered some garlic shrimp, some coconut shrimp, and some shrimp quesadillas. All right, sweetheart, our time at the beach is done. We made it over to the pool. Look at how nice and massive this pool is. Oh my gosh. Plenty of chairs available. We picked up some chairs over here underneath a tree and we have an umbrella over here we're gonna have another server and one thing that I wanted to mention is that the servers are separate from the pool and the beach so if you start at the beach first you need to close out your tab over there before coming over to the pool now they only ask for a gratuity and it's not mandatory but you know they do ask for it and they do work hard so go ahead and give them a tip and then you can come over to the pool and grab another server This is what happens when you forget your hat and you want to protect your bald noggin. You improvise. I've just been chilling here on the pool, doing this. Very relaxing. You should try it. Excuse me? There's just a random dog? Hello? I mean, we saw another dog over there. He's still over there chilling, but there's just a random dog. Hello? Let me love you. Come here, please. Anyways, guys, we're back chilling by the pool area. We spent some time in the water, and this is round, what, four or five? We think it's round four of uh, pina coladas. And what'd you get, a strawberry margarita again? Really good stuff. We're enjoying ourselves. Current time, it's just after 1.30 now. It's actually closer to like 1.40, but we're really enjoying our time here. It's very relaxing. Also, I want to point out that like 90% of the Walt Disney Theater cast is here with us right now in this pool area. And they make up the majority of the people that are actually in the pool. And they're all having a good time. I spent some time talking to some of them. And they said, yeah, this is like one of the few days that they all collectively have a day off. So they decided to come here and treat themselves to a little all-inclusive day at the beach. And I said, hey, that's awesome. And you know what? They deserve their time off. They work really hard. But it's awesome to see them having fun. And we're having fun. And ladies and gentlemen, our next round of food has arrived. Both Coda and I got cheeseburgers. Can I help you? I'm sorry, did you want them? No, I don't like pickles. You know what I just thought of? That's pretty sad. We're technically having cheeseburgers in paradise. And margaritas. <laughs> and margaritas. Oh, hi. Hi. No, you can't lick me. I'm sorry. I don't know where you've been, but you are adorable. All right, guys, well, we are finishing up our time here at Paradise Beach in Cozumel, Mexico, the all-inclusive, like, beach club. It's not really a resort. It's more like a club, I guess you can say. But overall, I really enjoyed it. What did you think of it? I thought it was really nice. Um, I like bouncing on the things out there, even though I was really bad at it. Food and drinks were all good? Yeah. Food and drinks were delicious. I absolutely love that. Is it worth it? I'd say so. I'd say so as well. $64 a person can be a little bit pricey for some folks, but I think it's worth it, especially if you take advantage of the food and drinks. You can definitely get your drinks worth, and the staff here are eager to get you some alcoholic beverages. So, I mean, could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. <laughs> but overall, I had a really nice time. This whole property is gorgeous. 
we had gorgeous weather. I mean, it was a little toasty. I'm still sweating right now, but the weather was great. The property is gorgeous. The pool is really nice. The staff are very attentive. They're always going to be coming around and they're going to, um, you know, keep asking you what you want. I will say the transition from beach to pool, it did take a little while for someone to come up and ask us if we needed anything. But after that initial, you know, question, then they started coming around regularly and asking us if we wanted anything. But overall, I think that this is definitely worth it. You can't find this through Disney. You do have to book this third party. I'm going to link this website down in the description below so that way you guys can check it out. And I honestly think it's worth it. Also, it is kid friendly. I know it might have seemed like there was more adults here than, than kids, which there definitely were, but kids are definitely allowed here. So just bear that in mind. But I would definitely come back here again. We are going to be back in Cozumel in January. I don't know exactly if we're going to be coming back here, but it is an option. It is definitely an option. All right, guys, let's head back to the taxi and go back to the ship. In case you guys are curious, there is a gift shop here as well. You can go ahead and do some souvenir shopping before you head back to the ship. That way you don't necessarily have to do it at the port. And in case you guys need it, there is a pharmacy here as well. So we made it back to the port area and I have a conspiracy. I think that this escalator is supposed to be open. I think it's supposed to be coming back up, but I think it's closed intentionally to make you walk past all the stores to come back this way. You guys can let me know. The last time you were here in Cozumel, was this escalator open? Because that is my conspiracy theory. I also want to point out just how clear this water is. You can see all the way to the bottom. Oh my gosh, that's one thing I loved about Cozumel last time and something that I'm pointing out now. The color of the water and how clear it is. It is gorgeous. Ah, hello Disney Fantasy. Good to see you again. Something I also want to point out that wasn't up earlier, but take a look at that giant Mexican flag over there. That's really cool. It's one of the first things you see when you get off the ship. Ugh, made it back to the room. It feels so good. The room is nice and cool. I'm so ready to shower. I'm so ready to use the toilet that's in our room because I didn't want to use the toilet anywhere else, but uh, it's so relaxing. We're going to shower and then we're going to relax over here. The next time you see us is probably either before we go to dinner or if Coda really wants ice cream, we're going to go up and possibly get some ice cream. Let's be real, Coda wants ice cream. Yep. <laughs> we have departed Cozumel and we are speeding our way down to Grand Cayman. It is a gorgeous evening. It's not too hot. It's a nice breeze. It's actually really windy. These uh, dividers are kind of clink clanking together. We haven't had that since we started the cruise, but either way, it's gorgeous outside. Let's go down to dinner. Let's go ahead and do a fit check with Coda. Take a look at that. You are rocking the Sally outfit today. I love it. Those ears don't match, but you know what? <laughs> it's all good. You look gorgeous. We are making our way to the back of the ship because dinner tonight is at Animator's Palette, which means only one thing black truffle pasta night. Mm. You guys already know me. I'm gonna order two of that. And then the pork chops, oh, so good. The focaccia bread with garlic bread or with garlic um, sauce. Yeah, 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 you guys know what I mean. It's all good. Let's go down, guys. And it's also Finding Nemo night. Yeah. <laughs> Koda loves Nemo. All right, time for dinner at Animator's Palette. <laughs> All right, we made it inside Animator's Palette, and guess what? We're right in front of the screen. So hopefully we'll be able to talk to Crush today, and Coda will be able to pay attention to some of her fishy friends. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at the menu. So starting us off, we have our specialty cocktails up top. For appetizers, we have our smoked salmon tartare, sliced around our ham, black truffle pasta, of course, and a tomato tart. We have our soups and salads over here, which includes a butternut squash soup, a uh, baked potato and cheddar cheese soup, arugula leaves, and chicken and walnut salad. We also have our bread service down here. For our main courses, we have our pinette bolognese, grilled tuna steak. We have our chicken breast. We have a pork chow, which is my personal favorite. We have the teriyaki dusted Angus beef tenderloin. And here are your vegetarian and letter note offerings. So you know that song, I don't need a menu? I don't need this menu. You guys know what I'm talking about. I'll play it in over here. I don't need this menu. No, I don't. I already know just what I want. But that was Coda. As soon as we walked in, and Coda was like, what does that say about us? <laughs> How often that we cruise that they hand us the menu to Animator's Palette, and we don't need it. We already know what we want. We know what we're here for. I'm just so excited. <laughs> Oh, 
Also, there is absolutely nothing I can do about the screen doing the thing. Nothing I can do about that. That's an octopus. No, it's the jellies. <laughs> <laughs> this is the entire the entire service <laughs> she just stares at the screen and waits for fish to come up and then she points them out where's Bailey does, does Bailey come? I don't think so I don't, or is that only at Turtle Trek? I think Turtle Talk <laughs> this is why I love her. <laughs> And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why I sail with Disney Cruise Line. Two orders of black truffle pasta, my favorite. But it's got some too, but only one order. Hello, Crash. Oh, he went over there. No. Well, babe, we had Crush for all of uh, two seconds. That is the unfortunate downside of Animator's Palette, especially on uh, Finding Emo Night, is that sometimes you have to watch other people have fun. You want to play with your friends? That is totally awesome. I like to play with my friends all the time, dude. My little dude, Squid. Dude, that's the most totally righteous death. And while Crush was over here talking to us, we got our soup course. This is the uh, baked potato and cheddar soup. And Coda got the, what was it? The what? Butternut squash. Ah, butternut squash. And our entrees have arrived. This is the pork chop. Definitely one of my favorites. I also want to point out, we are flying through this service. It is 6.33 right now. Holy cow. And we got here at 5.45. Okay, so pork chop today. While it was really tasty, it was a little bit on the drier side. I will say that, which is rather unfortunate. I always order those pork chops like hesitantly. Is that a word? Hesitantly? Sounds like a word. Anyways, I always proceed with caution when I order those pork chops because it's very easy to overcook a pork chop. And the very first time I ordered it, it was very, very well done. It was really tough and it was almost unbearable to eat. It wasn't until the next cruise after that I tried it again to give it a second shot. And that's when I really fell in love with it because it was cooked perfectly. This one, again, a little bit tough, but not unbearable. Still really tasty. If you do order the pork chop and it does come out a little bit too tough, don't hesitate to tell them and order another one. The dessert menu has arrived for Animator's Palette. Let's go ahead and check it out. All right, for our desserts, we have a crunchy walnut cake, chocolate fudge cheesecake, cookies and cream sundae, and an apple crumble rice pudding. For our signature, we have a lemon icebox pie, and no sugar added, we have a deconstructed carrot cake. And last but not least, we have our desserts. This is the cookie, uh, the Oreo cookie sundae, and you have the apple crumble. And so ends another Finding Nemo dinner service. Always Coda's status part where they go back to being paintings. So we came down to the shops to do a little shopping. I needed to get a phone case because I forgot my GoPro at home. Silly me. First I forget cash, now I forget my GoPro at home. Anyways, the shops down here, they always play like in park music loops. And they still play the old Epcot entrance loop and interventions loop every once in a while. I miss it so much. I walk in here and I'm just like, ah, my heart. <laughs> I need that old Epcot Interventions loop and entrance loop back. <laughs> it's heartbreaking that we don't have it. But anyways, we're picking this up. It's $24. We're going uh, snorkeling with some sea turtles tomorrow. So uh, I need something to keep the phone safe. Somehow I knew I'd find Coda in here. We're looking at the expensive stuff. What do you want? Ah, the fantasy charm. Hmm. Maybe, if you behave. <laughs> Alright, what's our towel animal gonna be? Take your pick. A crab. A crab? I say dinosaur. Okay. 
Dinosaur was good, guess. Let's see. And the card goes. Oh, it's a dog. It is a little dog. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at that. It's a little doggy. That is cute. I love it. <laughs> Alrighty, made it back into the room. I am transferring some videos onto my hard drive right there. Hello. And we are watching some Princess Diaries, one of Coda's favorite movies. Pretty much any time I tell her to put on a movie, it's this. <laughs> Heading back into the tube for some movie quotes trivia. Give it a go. So one more time. No. Okay, that's it. Do you know all of a sudden? You got it, say got it. Hello? Two. You're very enthusiastic about Ay, what you're caramba. writing. Ay, caramba. Sofia Vergara? <laughs> now, let me say this. I am not going to say it how it was said in the TV show. Because uh, heaven knows I haven't seen all of them. I'm very curious so as to what you're it, writing. I'm still waiting. I'm very curious. What, what, what do you got? So, number two, I caramba. Dr. Doof, really? So give me the actor's Phineas name. Phineas for Dr. Doof. Roll name. Interesting. Okay, well, that's a stretch. Number three. Another short and sweet. Bam. What? Bam. That's all you get. Bam. Wapa. Short and sweet. How in the hell are we supposed to get these? Dine o might. That one sounds very familiar. Oh, there's the smiles. There's the look of energy. Okay, I see you. We are two wild and crazy guys. Time for breakfast at Cabana's. You know, guys, nothing beats breakfast with this kind of view. Take a look at that. I love it. I love breakfast with a view. It is incredible. And take a look at that, guys. Not too long later, we have made it to Grand Cayman and we have pulled up next to the Celebrity Equinox. So we just made it back to our room from breakfast and we found this on our bed. First of all, our room hostess works real quick. She already made our bed for us, but we found this on the bed and um, we turn it around and this is what it says. Dear Gold, Platinum, and Pearl Castaway Club member. This cruise, we invite you to attend a special moment from Frozen, a musical spectacular. We hope you will join us in the Walt Disney Theater on Wednesday, September 13th at 10.45 a.m. This opportunity is only available to our loyal Gold, Platinum, and Pearl Castaway Club members. Is this like an early matinee showing for us or just like a behind the scenes look type of thing? I don't know. I've never done something like this before, cool. so this is really interesting. I'm excited to check this out. So in order to get on a tender boat, you do need to make your way, hello, down to the two. You do need to make your way down to the Walt Disney Theater, so that way they can organize you into separate groups to board the tender boats. So you can't just go down to deck one all willy-nilly hoping to get on a tender boat. There needs to be a little bit of an organization to it. Hi, Tiana. <laughs> And making our way onto the chicken tender boat. Going down to the lower level. Pro tip guys, if you want the best view of the ship as you depart, head for the very back row. Stand up and touch the butt. Did you do it? Yay. gentlemen a short 20 minute bus ride later we have made it to the turtle center now fun facts we are actually right across the street from the dolphin center where we got to play with some dolphins on our last cruise in november so that's pretty awesome we're in the same general area but now let's head on inside and uh play with some turtles i know coda's very excited also get ready to see plenty of chickens while you're out here but for now Let's head on inside. Well, it's safe to say Coda is already having the time of her life. We just checked in, we got our wristbands, and as soon as you come out, you see all the turtles. Look at these guys. Holy crap, these guys are huge. Wow, holy cow. There's so many of them. So what kind of turtles are these? Just green turtles? Green sea turtles. It is all for you, sweetheart, are you happy? 
definitely one of her favorite animals and for her to see so many in one spot it's definitely a treat for her oh no Dakota found the touch pool for the turtles <laughs> look at how little they are oh my god they this are thing is so tragic. <laughs> they are so cute so tiny be gentle two finger touch walk from here i will touch you hi <laughs> My turn. Wow. Scooting him backwards. Nugging. <laughs> Nugging. I'm not trying to scoot you backwards, I promise. Flipper. Flipper. Hey. Flipper. Are you playing with the shadows? <laughs> You are too cute. And here we are, guys. We made it to the Turtle Lagoon. This is where you have the opportunity to actually snorkel with the turtles. I don't see too many turtles in there right now, but I'm sure there are plenty because this place is really big. So we'll go, we'll find a spot, get our snorkel gear, and we'll dive on in. got done with the snorkeling with the sea turtles in Turtle Lagoon. That was a lot of fun. The only complaint that I have is that the water was just full of algae and it just made it feel dirty. Like the water wasn't dirty, dirty, but there was just so much floating algae. It just made it feel dirty. But other than that, it was a phenomenal experience. I tried to get as much footage as I can with my phone in a little waterproof case and I think some of it turned out really well. But Coda, oh my God, she really enjoyed it. Her eyes were wide the whole time. She was, you know, doing this. She was just way too excited excited so overall this was 100% worth it for her I really enjoyed it too now granted I'm not as much of a turtle lover as Coda but I still enjoyed the heck out of myself because this is a very unique opportunity how often do you get to snorkel exclusively with sea turtles now one thing I will say you start off over in that end and you have to make your way all the way over here a lot of the turtles hang out on that far end by the bridge over there so that's where you're gonna see the majority of the turtles you're gonna see turtles every once in a while in these other sections but the majority of them on that opposite end. All right, Coda's actually gonna get in the water with some of the baby sea turtles. Hey, you're so cute. Oh, my pants are gonna get wet. It's okay. Oh, look at the baby sea turtles. Yeah. 
This is heaven for you. I like when they boop into each other. Well, we were about to walk on out, but then Coda saw this sign that says baby turtles this way. So there is an education center and a hatchery. Let's go ahead on inside. So yeah, look at that. They have some baby turtles here. Okay, so that was the very last clip that we took at the Turtle Center. And I just realized that I didn't give you guys any information at all about this excursion. So once we actually got off the tender boat, we walked outside of the main pier port area, whatever you call it. And we actually hopped on a bus that took us over to the Turtle Center. It cost us about $3 a person and it took about 20 minutes to get there. So it wasn't very bad at all. Once we got there, we did check in and they verified our reservation. And at the time of me filming this video, it's about $40.50 a person. Children ages three to 12 are $25 a person. So what we did was the turtle adventure tour. Now this is the only tour that includes snorkeling in the turtle lagoon. There are several different ticket options for the Cayman Turtle Center, but the turtle adventure tour is the only one that offers the snorkeling. There were plenty of other activities that we could have done at the Cayman Turtle Center. However, we were on a little bit of a time crunch, so we only saw about a small percentage of it. However, just based off of what we saw and did, I would highly recommend visiting the Cayman Turtle Center. It was a lot of fun the snorkeling was 100 worth it and if you're a turtle fan like coda then you're definitely going to enjoy yourself i'll make sure to leave a link to the cayman turtle center website down in the description below so that way you guys can check it out for yourself and possibly book if you do find yourself in grand cayman okay let's get back to the video well guys i'm sorry to say coda and i got into a fight and the first thing she told me to do was go to hell so guess what we're in hell <laughs> Here in Grand Cayman, you can actually go to hell. There is a place called hell here. There's a gift shop and everything, and uh, this is it. <laughs> we were speaking to our taxi driver, and he asked how long we were going to spend here in hell. And I said, I don't know, maybe like an hour. And he said, no, you don't need an hour. I give people like 15, 30 minutes, and they're done. They look at these rocks. They go to the gift shop, do some shopping, get a T-shirt that said, I've been to hell and back, and then they're done. So, yeah, we're here. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the rocks. We have a... We have a couple chickens down here, and this is what you come for. These weird looking rocks. I don't really know what else to tell you about them. They're just weird looking rocks that I guess kind of resemble hell. And then you have a little bit of a devil looking guy right over here. But this is very interesting. And I had no idea that this was a thing until like a couple days ago when I was doing research on this place. Nothing too much else to look at. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Not a whole lot to look at other than a bunch of rocks. All right, let's go ahead and, uh, and check out this sketchy looking gift shop. Also, another thing, you can get uh, Grand Cayman postage stamps from hell. <laughs> that is very interesting. Here's some of the prices over here. So we made it inside the gift shop and there is a lot of different merchandise particularly this one. <laughs> I've been to hell and back. Very popular postcards. And then there's another postcard over here that gives a detailed history on how this place became hell. I'm sure you guys can look that up. Whole bunch of different t-shirts. I've been to hell and back shot glasses, different hats. I really like this one over here. Someone who loves me went to hell and got me the shirt. <laughs> And I like how when you walk in here, they say, how the hell are you? And then they ask you, where the hell are you from? <laughs> I love it. So we're sending some postcards to some family. And Coda wrote, Bermuda got canceled, so he went to hell instead. <laughs> I love that. 20 minutes later. Another 20 or so minute taxi ride back over to the cruise port. We have made it. We are inside the main gift shop that is right across the street from the cruise port. And uh, you can see there is a lot of different knickknacks and t-shirts and things here for you to buy. And I'm sure they're significantly cheaper than what you're going to find in the actual in security area because there's a little bit of a security perimeter and there are a bunch of gift shops in there. But I'm assuming that things are a bit more expensive in there. If you leave that secure area and you walk across the street, massive gift shop with a lot of different things in here. Oh, look at the little sign that they put out for us. Welcome home, Disney Cruise Line. Ah, yes, fresh water before we get back on board. Ugh, 
so we made it back to the room we're very tired but also very hungry because we didn't have anything to eat since breakfast so we got some food to have before dinner and just a little bit of a snack it's about three o'clock right now and dinner's at 5 45 so i figured we would get something to eat. All right, current time is 5.30. I've been in here just editing some videos. I have a Halloween Horror Nights video that I'm hopefully gonna be getting out very, very soon. But um, I need to get Coda out of bed. <laughs> She's been napping for the last eh, almost hour or so while I've been editing, and it's almost time for dinner. Ah, time for another dinner at Enchanted Garden. By the way, Coda and I forgot to hide ducks over the last couple days, so we grabbed a few. Both of us hid one before coming to dinner, and now after, we're gonna hide some more. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the menu for Enchanted Garden. Starting off on top, we have our specialty cocktails. For appetizers, we have the Cucumber Garden Roll and Ahi Tuna and Avocado Tower, North Atlantic Lobster Ravioli, and an Applewood Smoked Bacon Wild Mushroom Tart. We also have an heirloom tomato soup, a cream of green, a cream of green asparagus, bleh, spinach and raspberry salad, and a romaine wedge. For our main courses, we have the caramelized sea scallops, pan-seared sea bass. We have the roast chicken breast. We have ten pork tenderloin medallions with a slow roasted prime rib as well. And here are your vegetarian and lighter note offerings. All right, our appetizers have arrived. This is the ahi tuna and avocado tower with crispy noodles and wasabi dressing. And over here, I have the applewood smoked bacon wild mushroom tart with creamy leeks. And Coda over there has the North Atlantic lobster ravioli with roasted garlic and sweet basil in tomato broth. And our main courses have arrived. We have the slow roasted prime rib carved and served with thyme roasted vegetables, double baked potato, natural juice, and horseradish. All right, we have our dessert menu for Enchanted Garden. Let's take a look inside. On one side, we have our specialty drinks, and on the other, here are the desserts. We have the warm sticky date pudding, a chocolate garden tort. We have an orange yogurt cake and a chocolate brownie sundae. For our specialty, we have a southern style pecan tart and a lemon raspberry mousse bombay. Desserts have arrived. I have the warm sticky date pudding over here. And Coda opted for two desserts. She's got the pecan tart and the chocolate tort. <sighs> Another phenomenal dinner at Enchanted Garden complete. Okay, so we need to make our way back up to our room, but first we need to find a good place to hide this little guy. And guess where we are going to put it? We are going to put this little guy right back here. He can live right there. Bye, buddy. What's the towel, animal? I say dinosaur. He had a dog yesterday. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> I got nothing. Man. Monkey. Monkey? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's see. In. Light. Oh. Oh, no way. <laughs> no way. What? What is this? We have some rose petals, some swans, and a heart. What in the world is this? It's like a scrubber thing? Yeah, body wash infused buffer. What the heck? This is amazing. Wow. <laughs> okay, we were both wrong. Very. <laughs> Pleasantly surprised though, I've never had this before. This would have been really awkward on the wonder with my mom on the same room. <laughs> <laughs> but this is really nice. All right, just walked into the D lounge, ready for some theme park trivia. What are the vehicles at the Haunted Mansion called? Moving on to number two. What is the name of the Toy Story inspired ride in Magic Kingdom? Number three. Moving on to number three. What are the names of the three beach hiking ghosts in the Haunted Mansion? Number four. What is the tallest attraction at Walt Disney World Resort? Moving on to number five. Who was the narrator of the Wishes Fireworks Show? Number six. Can you name the water ski show that was performed at the Walt Disney World Resort in early 1970s? Number seven. 
What Hollywood actress portrayed the supreme leader in Captain EO? Number eight. What is the dog's name in the Carousel of Progress? Well, that theme park trivia was definitely difficult. We got 17 out of 25, and the winning team actually got 25 out of 25, a perfect score. A lot of these questions were actually really difficult. They were really difficult. And I'm so mad because they asked, what was the original year that the Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln debuted? I said 1965, it was 1964. I was so mad. But yeah, overall, it was a really good trivia. Really good theme park trivia. Didn't win, which is totally fine, but we still got a decent enough score. So this is something cool that I really wanted to point out. Take a look at this brand new photo op that they have over here. It's the fireplace from Elemental. That's really interesting. Made it back into the tube for some intuition, and this is the busiest I have seen it this entire cruise. This is wild. Hi, Rocky! Everyone say hi, Rocky! Hi, Rocky! This is one of our bar team. We've also got the rest of the bar team. Everyone say hi, bar team! Hi, bar team! Rocky, tell me, what is the drink of the day? Low tide. Pardon? Low tide. Pardon? High tide. High tide! <laughs> What's inside a high tide? <laughs> Alcohol. Alcohol. Perfect. Good job, Rocky. <laughs> and then over here, everybody say yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Damien. <laughs> First of all, AJ, it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then, last but not least, there is I, and I am. And I come all the way from England, 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 England. Oi, oi. Oh, you, who did a third one? <laughs> Get out. <laughs> now, I'm glad that you've all had a good day because guess what? I've had a bad day! Or I see that. <laughs> I said, I've had a bad day! Woo! Yeah, I know, terrible. Now, it was actually going pretty well. It was going pretty well, but then I was doing um, Port Adventures this morning. I was helping that team, and a lady came over to the desk and she said, <laughs> I said, no, this is the check-in desk. <laughs> Another guest came over to me and said, AJ, I'm trying to make myself into a pane of glass. I said, you're making yourself perfectly clear. <laughs> now, speaking of chickens, actually, a chicken came over to me and said, hey, AJ, I don't know where I've put my eggs. I said, you've probably mislaid them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play intuition! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Don't worry about it, I'm fine. All right. Now, A noun. A fancy noun. <laughs> All right, so go, fancy noun. Don't worry about it. All right, so this. Laurie, stop talking to everybody. Pay attention. Okay, this is how we're going to play intuition. I'm going to. Uh, stop talking. I'm trying to explain the game. You. I am going to ask you either a question or give you a prompt. What you have to do is write down your answers on the whiteboard and then I'm going to ask one member of the audience out here the same question. Now, if you match one person, you will get five points. But if you match everybody, you will get ten points. Make sense? 
Not really, but you'll, you'll understand as we play. <laughs> okay, we're going to start with a practice round for both teams. And this is the practice question. I want you to write down the name of the cruise director. So write down the name of the cruise director. Rich, what did you put? Gary? Goofy. Goofy is not the cruise director. Yeah. Jimmy. That is also not the cruise director. Believe it or not, Goofy was closer. Uh, Laurie? Steven! And Justin? Steven with a PH. Look at that. Now. These guys didn't match anyone. No points. They didn't match with the audience, but they matched with each other. Five points! Yeah. What do you mean impulsive? You mean Laurie can't stand still? <laughs> I know. <laughs> She's my spirit animal. <laughs> Stop making friends! <laughs> team Fancy Now. I want you to look at your opposing team and describe them using one singular word. I want you to look at them and describe them using one singular word. You're right, I know you didn't know what a noun was. It was the, it was the pure fear in your eyes. <laughs> As I said noun and you went, I live in America, I... <laughs> oh, Jesus. oh, don't be like that, you guys don't even know the hokey pokey. <laughs> it's the hokey pokey, who cares, not bothered. You're missing out a whole thing, sing it, go on, you put your... And you turn yourself around, that's what it's all about. Ba -da -da. Whoa, the hokey pokey, oh yeah. Whoa, the hokey pokey, it's party time. Whoa, the hokey pokey. Knees bend, arms stretch, rah, rah, rah. You've been robbed your entire lives. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hokey pokey, it's fun. None of this porky nonsense. Anyway, what we're we doing now is, okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to day five of our Disney Cruise Line vacation on board the Disney Fantasy. We are up bright and early today. It is about 7.30 in the morning and we're heading on upstairs to Cabanas because today is Churro Mickey Waffle Day. It is also a day at sea and it is also a day that we have Palo Brunch booked. Unfortunately, we did get confirmation yesterday that today is Churro Mickey Waffle Day, the one day that I have been looking forward to the most on board this entire cruise. And it just unfortunately is the day that we have Palo Brunch booked. So we're going to go up there bright and early. We're going to have just a few Churro Mickey Waffles just to, you know, satisfy my craving. And then we'll return to the room, take a quick nap, and then we will head on over to Palo. But other than that, guys, it's going to be a fantastic day. So I hope you guys are ready. Let's go to Cabanas. Oh, my goodness. Heck, yes. There they are. The Churro Mickey Waffles. Oh, yes, I can't wait. Ah, you cannot beat this. A couple of Churro Mickey Waffles and the open ocean at sunrise. Look at how gorgeous this is, and it is empty in here. Oh, my gosh. This is the earliest I have ever been to Cabanas. And you know what? For these guys, it's worth it. Another thing that I'm having to worry about this morning is that today is the day that I'm supposed to be able to book the treasure. And um, I'm out in the middle of the ocean, so I have the premium internet package. I am trying my best to get through on my phone so I can book it online, but at 8 o'clock the phone lines open over at the uh, Disney Cruise Line call center, so worst case scenario I will be doing that. But I would just like to like visually see what room I would get, you know what I mean? But yeah, the Disney Cruise Line website is uh, not in my favor this morning. So just a few things. Number one, I'm on hold with Disney Cruise Line right now. I know the camera doesn't want to focus, but yeah, I'm on hold with Disney Cruise Line right now. Meanwhile, I still have the um, website going. I'm trying. They said it's about a five minute wait time, so I'm very hopeful. Also, another thing, I completely forgot that these churro Mickey waffles, you don't even need syrup. I haven't dunked them in syrup at all. They're just that good and flavorful. Oh my God, I am enjoying the heck out of myself. Hopefully, we'll have some luck with the, with the treasure. 
Okay, so, update. I didn't manage to get through to anybody on the phone with Disney Cruise Line, but I did manage to make it through online to the Disney Treasure, and I managed to secure a room. Now, I didn't put a down payment or anything on it. They do have the option where you can hold it for a few days. So what I'm going to do is now that I have the holding reservation number, I'm going to go down to get services, and I'm going to see if they can apply my, um, my, what is it, 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 my placeholder. I'm going to see if they can apply my placeholder and see if they can apply the 20% um, cruise discount that we got for this Bermuda sailing since we didn't go to Bermuda. So that's really good. Hopefully we can get all that squared away now. Let's go ahead downstairs and take care of that. By the way, those churro Mickey waffles, oh my god, they were so good. They were so good. I only had three because we have Palo Brunch a little bit later, but that was enough to satisfy my craving. That was incredible. It was so good. All right, let's go downstairs, guys. I tell you guys what, early morning on a sea day is the best time to come to Cabanas. There is no line at all. Okay, so no luck at guest services. I'm heading back up to the room right now. They said that I need to use my in-room phone to dial star 15, and that connects me to some reservations people, and they'll be able to apply it there. That's, that's what they're telling me, so let's go back up to the room. Unfortunately, that means I have to wake up Coda. <laughs> All right, so it's a little while later. It's going on 10.15 right now. We actually need to go downstairs to the Walt Disney Theater because the other day we got an invitation for a special gold, platinum, pearl event in the Walt Disney Theater for Frozen, the musical spectacular. So we're going to go downstairs and check that out. And then immediately after, we have Palo Brunch. But... An update on the Disney Treasure. It was a resounding success. We were able to book the Disney Treasure and on top of the 10% discount that we got for booking on board the ship, we were also able to apply the 20%. So a total of 30% off our Disney Treasure Cruise, which was absolutely phenomenal. So we are gonna be sailing on January 11th through the 18th on a seven night Western Caribbean cruise and we are in a family veranda room. That 30% discount managed to bring the price down dramatically, so we were able to go ahead and book that. I'm super excited for that, and it all worked out perfectly. All we had to do was dial star 15 from our stateroom, and we connected to someone on shore, and they were able to take care of it for us. So, yes! I'm so excited. All right, we made our way over to the Walt Disney Theater for the Gold Platinum Pearl event, and we have a bunch of officers hanging around, in their nice uniforms and it looks like they're giving us some complimentary alcoholic beverages don't mind if i do okay so i don't know for sure if we're going to be watching the full show right now it looks like it might be either that or it's a behind the scenes thing i don't exactly know for sure but either way coda and i have palo brunch at 11 30 so we may need to dip out early so that's why we are kind of here at the end of the theater so we can make a quick escape if we have to i have a vocal director I have a puppet master, I have a production stage manager, and I have an entertainment manager, plus the cast. Now the cast that you're seeing on board right now, there are about 45 of them. So each cast contains about 45, 45 to 50, depending on uh, which ship we're on and what particular product we're doing. It is our job to ensure that we maintain the integrity of the original show that was set. So yes, I will direct the show, but I oversee the entire process. This particular cast, in fact, and I'll talk a little bit about this later, this particular cast has about 45 different pieces of entertainment that they have to learn during their rehearsal process. Let me go ahead and bring you downstage a little bit here so our friends can see you. There you go. Now, as you can see, these puppets, this is a skill. Trust me, this is a skill in itself. Uh, am I right, Sam? Yeah. Um, there's an awful lot of training that goes into this process throughout the entire time. So, for example, Frozen. It's also going to take us 11 days to teach, but throughout that entire time, we're continually refining our puppetry skills. You actually, if you look closely, you'll see the bottom left corner there. Do you recognize anybody? There you go, that's actually Kevin, yes. We're very fortunate to, to have both our, our performers here. Actually, returning performers. We refer to as our alumni, and we're very happy that they're back here with us. So why don't we show our friends here, Sven, what, we, what, what we've got to work with here. So obviously Sven's eyes, go ahead and give us a bat your eyelids for us, Sven. There you go, thanks <laughs> um, If I said to you, Sven, would you like a carrot, what might you do? <laughs> <laughs> what if I told you, I'm sorry, I'm blocking you. Um, what would you say if I said we ran out of carrots? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. What, what about if I said, um, did you hear that? 
Good. <laughs> Excellent. You can see all this. I mean, it's, it's instant for Connor because he spent so much time working on these things. Um, you'll notice that Connor has control of the eyes, also the ears. Can you give us a little ear? There you go. Uh, obviously the mouth and, and the tongue. <laughs> oh, something broke over there. The tongue got <laughs> And you'll see, you'll notice also that, you know, as Connor travels, his back legs respond to his front legs. And there's a weight distribution here that keeps it, trying to keep it uh, level for him. So uh, we try not to keep our individuals in puppets that are load bearing like this one for too terribly long. It gets difficult in rehearsals because sometimes you need more than 30 minutes to work through something, but we're in and out and in and out. Am I right, Connor? Yes. There you go. <laughs> Say hello, Connor. Hello. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Connor. And uh, now over here, we, we well, I, Olaf can speak for himself. Well, why don't you say, tell us something about yourself, Olaf? Hi, I'm Olaf, and I like warm hugs. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Now, Connor, uh, Connor, good grief. Olaf, if you don't mind, uh, I'd like to maybe have a conversation with our friend Kevin. He can tell us a little bit about you. You mean that guy that just follows me around all the time? That's the one. <laughs> huh. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> now, you'll notice Kevin's going to talk us, actually, he has, he's going to talk us through a little bit of what he has control of and some different things that he can do. Yeah, so, so similarly to Sven, um, we have some control over the eyes, he can blink. I've got a trigger here in the back that controls the mouth. There's also the trigger that controls the eyes. And then there's also a wheel in the back of my little handle here that controls the eyebrows. <laughs> so you have a lot of different mobility with that. And you can also push the handlebar forward, and you can also create a mouth movement as well. So it's a combination of those two things that gives you the look of Olaf talking. Also, you have little um, arms here. You can control the arms and bend the arms and can make them do different things. <laughs> also, I'm strapped to the feet. So, give us a shuffle that can Give us a little shuffle. There you go. <laughs> so, and underneath my costume, there's a harness that connects the puppet. So it's kind of like wearing a big backpack, essentially. So, yeah. What well, um, actually, uh, Kevin has some great detail. Yes, please. Thank you. What I'd love to show, maybe Kevin, if we could, uh, if Olaf, without maybe uh, getting some of that head movement in there that we did, I'd love for Olaf to just say wow, like, wow, without moving the head, because I want to I want to show our friends here what a difference it makes when we add all the pieces oh, together. Oh sure. Yeah. Wow. Good. Wow. <laughs> Okay, makes sense, right? The, the mouth open, he said, wow. Go ahead and add the head in for us. Wow. You see how it changes? <laughs> it's really the smallest thing, but it is really, the, those are the pieces uh, one of our puppet trainers. Aw, thank you so much. Oh. <laughs> Yay, that's so cool. If there's one thing Koto loves more than Disney cruising, it's free snacks. <laughs> An unfortunate casualty of us going to Palo is Jack Jack's incredible diaper dash. We're not gonna be able to catch it on this voyage, but I'm sure everyone is gonna have a lot of fun watching. Okay, fit check for Paolo. Look at us, look at her. Look at you, you are looking cute. <laughs> All right, we have received our menu for Paolo. Just like with our night at Animator's Palette, we don't really need a menu. We know what we want. <laughs> Everything here looks absolutely delicious. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. So in an effort to recreate the old Palo brunch buffet that they used to have, our server brought us out basically everything. <laughs> we have our seafood tray over here, we have our charcuterie board, we have our savory breads, and we have our danishes over there. She gave us some plates so that way we can kind of pick and choose as we want. We also have some non-alcoholic drinks over here as well. It's a little bit swirly, I know. It's very difficult to see, but yeah, you can kind of see it. It's got some glitter in there, make it look all shimmery. It's really nice. I cannot wait to dig in. Next up, we have a favorite that we only discovered recently, which is the Grape and Gorgonzola Pizza. She came over and dropped us a slice each. Now, this isn't something that's on the menu. You have to ask for it specifically, but they'll be more than happy to make it for you. Next up, we have our Eggs Benedict. I opted for the salmon. It typically comes with caviar, but this one didn't come with caviar today, which is a little unfortunate, but it's fine. And Coda 
went for a traditional X Benedict. And ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, we have our chicken parm. Both Coda and I ordered some. Let's go ahead and dig in. <sighs> All right, I promise I was peer pressured into this dessert. I did not want it. And Coda got a dessert and even my uh, server peer pressured me a little bit into getting a dessert. <laughs> at least taking a bite, but uh, I'm so full. Coda, on the other hand, look at her. She's doing her happy dance. She's happy. Mm -hmm. This is what she looks forward to. She loves this molten lava cake. <laughs> uh, I'm so full. I'll take one bite. One bite. You know, there are times in this relationship where I'm the garbage disposal, and then there are times where Coda is the garbage disposal. <laughs> she finished hers off. I had a few bites of mine, and now she's finishing it off. <laughs> look at how happy she is. Here is our receipt for Apollo Brunch. The prices did increase, unfortunately, so it went from $45 to $50. So now for two people, it is $100 total. Thankfully, with our uh, Castaway Club Platinum status, we still get it for free. So total due is zero. All we need to do is leave some gratuity because they did a phenomenal job. And we can head on out. Uh, and with that, we are back in the room after a phenomenal and very filling Apollo Brunch. Babe, how you doing back there? Struggling. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Food coma, food baby, all the above. We're going to go ahead and take a nap now. We're going to take a few hours and we are going to take a nap because it is a day at sea. We have nothing better to do other than to just relax and we are going to take a nap. So I will see you guys when we wake up and uh, whenever we head off to the next activity, which I have no idea what it's going to be, but you know what? We're just going to relax. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Whew. All right, guys. Hello. It has been a minute since I have seen you, but probably only a couple seconds since you've seen me. So we did end up taking a little bit of a nap. Then we woke up. We went upstairs. We hung out by the pool for a little bit. And then we came back and I finished editing that vlog that I showed you guys in the last video. So hopefully we're going to have that vlog uploading on YouTube overnight from the ship. It's going to take just about the entire night to upload. Um, just in case you guys are wondering for anybody who might be doing YouTube who's going on a Disney cruise and might want to upload, um, for the uh, premium Wi-Fi package, it takes about an hour per gigabyte to upload onto YouTube. Fun fact. So yeah, uh, this video that I'm uploading right now, it's approximately 14 gigabytes. So it's going to take most of the night to upload. But anyways, that's besides the point. YouTube nerdy stuff. Uh, we are dressed now. We are going to head down to I think the D-Lounge or La Piazza because we are going to some Disney trivia. I don't know what kind of trivia. It just says Disney trivia. So it could be anything Disney related. We're going to go do that. And then we have dinner at Royal Courts, which it is lobster night. So I'm super excited for that. Let's not waste any time, guys. Let's head on downstairs and have some more fun. So we made it down to the atrium. We have a little bit of time to kill before our trivia. And we're just scoping out a spot to hide some more ducks. I'm thinking possibly up here by the Port Adventures desk on deck five, maybe? But yeah, it's all quiet now in the atrium. Another thing that I want to point out, I know it's very difficult to see, but you see that right there, the yellow thing? That's a duck. Somehow a duck ended up in these light fixtures because those things open and close. Somehow a duck ended up in there. And also, there's another one over here. You can kind of see it right here in the corner, right there in the corner, and there is a duck in there. Don't ask me how that ended up there. I don't know. Still interesting to see. Okay, this is where we are going to hide one of our ducks. And I do believe that I want to place it over here. Just right here. Boop. Have fun at your new home, buddy. Oh, we're just going for the hardest one. <laughs> Wanna go for the hardest one? Yeah, we're adults. Alrighty. So Coda has discovered the Midship Detective Agency. It looks like we're going to start one of these missions. And hopefully by the end of the cruise, we complete it. <laughs> hey, Mickey, where are you? Pepe, what are you doing in Mickey's office? I have an important case. Well, no? uh, Milky Mouse is out to lunch, OK? OK. I don't mean to Pepe sus. Okay. OK. Uh, but he, uh, he put me in charge, OK? You got to be kidding. No, it's true. I'm in charge. So uh, what is the problem? OK, listen, someone has taken all our props, and we can't perform the show without them. Not the props. No? Now that we are on a romantic cruise, where are you taking off for dinner tonight? Piggy, I can't think about that. Someone has taken all our props and we can't perform our show without them. So can you kind of understand how this is the first iteration of what we have on the Wish? This is old school technology. Aw, look who we have walking around the deck. Thank you. 
<laughs> you look gorgeous today. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, it is awesome. Love seeing you in your classic outfit. It's nice to get out of the cruise director or captain's outfit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Minnie, you have a wonderful day. <laughs> and Coda decided to hide her duck right over here behind Mickey's head. Very clever. We got 17. <laughs> we had to do this trivia in like the back corner of the piazza because it was completely full in the main area where they were doing it. So we're sitting here in the corner, we're listening, and um, we lost. <laughs> we lost. That was actually kind of difficult. It was a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be, particularly towards the back half. They were asking some real curveball questions like, how many years would it take to stay in every single room at the Walt Disney World Resort, like in all the hotels? I'm, heck if I know. <laughs> so I also want to point out there was a question asking how many muses tell the story of Hercules. We didn't have to, you know, question very long. <laughs> Coda's dress had the answer on it right there. <laughs> Holy crap, that's Thor over there. <laughs> what in the world? Hello Thor, how are you? Oh my gosh, thank you so much. You are amazing. I have a question for you. Yes. If you have one, if you had one piece of advice to give for becoming worthy to wield Mjolnir, what is the best advice you can give? One piece of advice. Don't skip leg day. Don't <laughs> skip leg day. Okay. True worthiness lies within. You must discover who you are meant to be. Try to put your best foot forward every day. All right. I appreciate that, my friend. Thank you so much for saying hi. <laughs> well, you keep an eye out for him. <laughs> no, I'm actually with her. Ah, ah, excellent. <laughs> well, I wish you luck in your travels. All right, time for dinner at Royal Court, round two. I'm not gonna lie, I'm still pretty full from brunch. The only reason why I'm really here is because it's lobster night. If it wasn't lobster night, I would have highly considered missing it and just getting something from Flo's later on in the evening, but I can't miss lobster night, you know? You pay so much for this cruise, you need to take advantage of lobster night. All right, Coda, so how are you feeling? Are you still full from brunch? <laughs> are you gonna be having three desserts tonight with dinner? No. <laughs> are you gonna have at least one dessert though? Okay, <laughs> that's my girl. Let's go ahead and check out the night two menu of Royal Courts. All right, for our appetizers, we have an aged prosciutto, a marinated tiger shrimp, we have baked eggplant, we have an oyster Rockefeller in the half shell. For our soups and salads, we have a braised oxtail soup and a white onion soup, which is my personal favorite. We also have a couple of salads down here. Here is our bread service, which is sourdough. For the main courses, we have the lobster tail. Of course, we're going to be getting some of that tonight. We have a red snapper. We have a fettuccine alfredo with chicken. We also have the pan-seared venison medallions and an oven-roasted pork tenderloin. And here are your vegetarian and lighter note offerings. Our appetizers have arrived very quickly. I actually ordered something from Animator's Palette. This is the porcini sacchetti, pasta filled with porcini mushrooms, Swiss and fontina cheese with garlic, thyme, and prosecco wine sauce. Next up, we have our white onion soup. And in near record time, we have our entrees at 6.15. Good Lord. This is our lobster. Now they did tell us to wait a second so that way they can come and debone it, or not debone it, but pull it out of the shell like he's gonna do now. But I am excited. Thank you so much. That's the look of, oh God, there's lava cake for dessert at dinner too. <laughs> well, babe. And creme brulee. Are you gonna get the, the lava cake? Yep, for sure. <laughs> All right, guys, here is the dessert menu for Captain's Gala Night at Royal Court. Let's go ahead and take a look. For our desserts, we have the raspberry vanilla creme brulee. We have an apricot trio, a chocolate lava cake, and the Captain's Table Sunday. For our specialty, we have an old-fashioned apple pie. And for no sugar added, we have a chocolate cheesecake. And ending off the night with a little bit of dessert. Definitely not going to eat the whole thing, but something sweet. Coda, are you going to finish the whole thing? Are you a trooper? Are you a quitter? No. No?
you going to finish the whole thing? I don't know. <laughs> All right, we'll check back in with you. Are you waving the white flag? I think so. You're done? We only have two bites left. Literally two good bites. So cool. Come on. You're a trooper. You're better than this. Yeah, you peer pressured me for dessert earlier. Because I wanted a second dessert earlier. <laughs> you can finish this. You can do it. Alright, really quick, what's the towel animal? I'm saying dinosaur. I'm sticking to my guns. I'm gonna get it right eventually. Monkey. Monkey? I don't know. <laughs> Bear. Bear? Alrighty. What in the world is that? It's a bunny! And there we go. That is most definitely a bunny. <laughs> yeah. Oof. All right, we are back in the room. We are extremely full, but that's not going to stop us. We are going to head on upstairs and we are going to spend some more time in the pool. Now is the weird time where some people are still at dinner and the second seating of dinner is going to be starting soon. We're going to spend some time in the pool. Hopefully it's going to be nice and empty for us. We're going to head on up there, relax for a little bit, spend some time up there before heading back down to the room and getting ready for Match Your Mate. It is the one adult only show that we look forward to on every cruise and we do need to get there early and i highly recommend if you're sailing and you want to experience that show that you get there early as well it's gonna be a fun night guys let's go this girl was on the verge of death in the room and now look at her she saw the ice cream machine are we gonna regret this ice cream later yeah. okay Give me five well, minutes. what flavor is it Okay, that was a very relaxing time over here at the adult-only pool area. Spent some time in the main pool and then we hopped on over to the hot tubs that are right behind us over there. They're very comfortable. Are you relaxed? Yes. Are you still full? Yes. Yeah, unfortunately, we're still very full. But we're going to head on down back to the room, get changed, and get ready for match your meeting. Let's go. So we just made it back to the room and we found this on our door. We got pixie dusted and uh, let's go ahead and unwrap it so I can show you guys. Take a look at this. <laughs> we don't talk about Bermuda. No, no, no. I know the camera's having a hard time focusing on it. There you go. Look at that. This is a magnet. Someone made this at the last minute and put it on our door. <laughs> that is so cool. I don't know who did this. No one left a note or anything, but this is awesome. All right, we made it down to the tube. Current time is 9.45 in the evening. Match your mate doesn't start until 10.30. And this is how full it is. I cannot stress enough. Get here early if you want a seat. All right. Oh, the flip flops are coming off. What are you gonna do, Mallory? Nothing. Oh, Mallory's taking this seriously. Okay, here is your TV tune. Military. <laughs> it's up now. What is it? It's a Twilight Zone or Twilight Zone. I wasn't the right side. Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone. That's correct. Good job. Now everybody loves the Twilight Zone. Uh, Tyra Tyra, right? Yeah. Um, Tyra Tyra is one of my favorite rides of all time. Um, apart from when I go to Paris. Um, first of all, it's in French. Um, but I mean all of it. So you walk onto the ride and say, bonjour. <laughs> Baguette. <laughs> Chocolate. <laughs> but everything is in French, apart from the one little creepy girl. So you're on the ride, it's going up and down, and all of a sudden she goes, bonjour. <laughs> um, in the frog's legs. <laughs> and then she goes, come with me. It's the creepiest thing. your first date like how did you meet and how did it end now if you just to, if you were to describe your current love life <laughs> your love life <laughs> in one of these three disney songs would it be song number one <laughs>
<laughs> Let's start with Bonnie. <laughs> I want you to imagine that you are trapped on a desert island with their side of the family. So you are trapped on a desert island with their side of the family. And I want to know, who are you going to kick off the island first? Where? the most interesting place you have ever discovered the magic. <laughs> so, a little bit of an update. We just finished Matchy Mate, which was a lot of fun. Um, first of all, Coda, you're holding it backwards. <laughs> See? <laughs> Coda is wanting to continue her uh, her detective work. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. Yeah, I sure hope I don't ever see it again. <laughs> the little squeal that Coda just let out when she saw Pepe's door. Oh gosh, it's it's nugget sized. <laughs> Kinda. Um, and Coda, are you okay? No. What did the sign say? Oh no. It closed at midnight and she really wanted to to solve the mystery tonight. Um, I'm sorry, baby. Okay, so I will say, we do have a little bit of time before we need to go on shore for Castaway Key. So we can wake up, and after breakfast we can finish it, okay? Alright, All right, let's go back to the room and go to sleep. Yeah. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Disney's private island, Castaway Key. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Disney Fantasy and welcome to day six of our Disney Cruise Line vacation. Today, as you guys already saw, we are at Castaway Key and it is day one of two of our back-to-back -back day at Castaway Key. We are going to be back on the island tomorrow, which means I have no idea what we're going to be doing today. I don't know if we're going to be snorkeling today. I don't know if we're just going to be chillaxing by the beach, maybe go to Serenity Bay. Who knows? The world is basically our oyster when it comes to Castaway Key today. But first, we're going to head on upstairs. As per usual, grab some breakfast at Cabana's before heading on downstairs and having some fun on the island. All right, we made it to Cabana's rather late today. It is going on 1030 and they do close in just a few minutes, but I have my Mickey waffles. I have some sausages. They do have this little breakfast sandwich thing with some eggs and sausage, which I'm really excited to try. And of course, I got a hash brown as well. Nothing too crazy because we do know that we're going to be loading up on the barbecue once we're on the island. One. Ah, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Disney's Castaway Key. Feels so good to be back. Last time we were here was what, January on The Wish with your parents? Yeah, that was the last time we were here. That was a long time ago, and we spent the night here. <laughs> if you guys want to check out that video, I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. You can see us docking at night, spending the night over here. It was very interesting. But now, let's make our way over to the beaches. Hello, Captain. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> and this is something that I've never seen before. We have a boat carrying a bunch of construction equipment. Huh. I wonder what they're doing. Oh, wow. Take a look at that. This is one of those rare days where none of the excursions are canceled. Perfect weather day. Honestly, guys, the best way to get the most incredible views is to not take the tram, but rather walk to the family beaches. You can get some nice views of the ship and you can get up close to this beautiful blue water. Ooh, Hello, Mickey. How are you? Mickey. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's been such a long time since I've seen you in this outfit. We, it's been a minute since we've been to Castaway Key. <laughs> I, two days in a row. I know, two days in a row. Look at the beautiful ship in the background. You do such a good job with maintaining these ships. It was so smooth. I didn't even feel it this morning. <laughs> really good job, Mickey. Can we get a couple photos with you? Well, we haven't been here since January. Let's see what's new in the gift shop at She Sells Seashells. Starting things off, Private Paradise with Finding Nemo on it. That is actually kind of adorable. They have a brand new Castaway Key t-shirt. You have the logo on the front. And on the back it says, get there fast and take it slow. And it even features the crashed plane that you see on the island. That's really cool. This shirt is definitely new since the last time we were here. I have one snack in mind. 
Then we have another one that says, last one to cast away key is a guppy. <laughs> a couple of other shirts that I feel are new is this Castaway Key one with Mickey surfing. We have one with Finding Nemo and Friends that says Just Keep Swimming. We also have one featuring Hey Hey that says I Need a Beach Break. And I think this one over here, Another Day in Paradise, sure sounds good to me, is also new. Another brand new shirt, we have Vacation Mode on Island Time featuring Stitch. Something else that's new are these new swimsuits over here featuring Stitch. We also have another black t-shirt that is new to us as well. And we have some swim trunks featuring Mickey, Donald, Goofy, and Pluto. And for the little, little ones, we have some brand new swim trunks inspired by Star Wars. That's really cute. All right, we made it to the very first family beach. We are the beach closest to the snorkeling area. Plenty of chairs available. I know it may look like there's a lot taken, but trust me, there is a lot of chairs available. The ones that are mostly taken are the ones under the umbrellas. All the ones that are exposed are left untouched. But still, it is a gorgeous day. We have our spot. Time to get into the water for a little bit. All right, now that we have properly applied some sunscreen, it's time to put the camera away and head on into the water for just a little bit. Two hours later. All right, now that we've had some time in the water, now it's time to head on up and get some grub. Little word of advice, make sure you have flip flops or some other kind of shoes that you can use to walk on the concrete because this can and will get extremely hot. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Cookie's Barbecue. Let's take a look at what we have. We have some chips, some coleslaw, potato salad, macaroni salad, and we have some grilled street corn salad. We have hot dogs, we have cheeseburgers, we even have beef brisket sandwiches. We also have Cajun rotisserie chicken, barbecue pork spare ribs, some chili beans, some honey and bourbon salmon filets, some corn and sauerkraut. We also have some little desserts over here, pineapple crumble bar cake, we have a brownie, we have some cornbread and chocolate chip cookies. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what we're working with for lunch. We have some ribs, I have a hot dog wiener over here, a cheeseburger, I have a brisket sandwich, but to be honest, I just want the brisket, not like the bread and stuff, so I'm not gonna be eating that. And I have some potato salad and we got a pineapple snack over here. Also, just a little word of warning. The seagulls here, they have no chill. They will swarm and attack any little piece of food that they can find. So just be aware of what you're leaving out on your on your chair. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the time is now 3.30 in the afternoon. And as you guys can see, things are starting to wind down over here on Castaway Key. All aboard time isn't until 5.30, but a lot of folks are already starting to feel the heat. You spend enough time in the salt water and the heat is just gonna get to you. You wanna relax and go back to the ship nice and early and get showered and get ready for dinner. That is exactly what we're gonna be doing. Again, guys, we have a second day at Castaway Key tomorrow and we're gonna be doing a lot more, but today was just more of a chill day. Let's go ahead and get things wrapped up and head on back to the ship. Something else that was decorated for the 25th anniversary that has now since been restored to its former glory is Mount Rustmore. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have set sail from Castaway Key, and we are gonna spend an evening out at sea. Coda and I are showered, dressed, and ready to go to Animator's Palette for animation night. Let's head on down, guys. I tell you guys what, there is possibly no greater feeling on a Disney cruise than the shower after a Castaway Key day. Coda, am I right? Yes. It feels glorious, and when you get out and you put on fresh clothes, you just, uh, you feel invigorated. <sighs> it just feels great. You guys that have been on Disney Cruises before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, welcome back to Animator's Palette. And tonight is Animator's Night. We have our little drawings over here. 
Now he gets to create something. And here is my creation. My green haired man is a little confused. <laughs> You got the green shoes and the classic 90s S symbol. You guys know. You're a 90s kid. You guys know that symbol. We all knew it. <laughs> and here is Coda's creation. Take a look at that. That's not bad. It's adorable. She's got the little mini ears and everything. And I love the way she signs her name with the paw. <laughs> all right. So things are going to be done a little bit differently tonight. Not only do we have our main menu, but they also handed us our dessert menu as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main menu first. Up top we have our specialty beverages. Moving on down to our appetizers, we have a tomato caprese, a sesame crescent tuna sashimi, the porcini sacchetti, and the Malaysian chicken satay. For our soups and salads, we have a lobster bisque, white cheddar and broccolini soup, a dill and lemon marinated shrimp, as well as a crisp lo mein wedge salad. And here is our bread service. Moving over to our entrees, we have a grilled garlic marinated shrimp, a roasted salmon steak, chicken schnitzel, herb crusted rack of lamb, and a roasted fillet of beef wellington. And here are your vegetarian and lighter note offerings. And now let's take a look at the dessert menu. For our desserts, we have a celebration cake, an orchard peach tart, a chocolate decadence, and a very cherry chocolate sundae. For our specialty, we have an amaretto cheesecake, and for our no sugar added, we have a cappuccino mousse. One of my favorite parts about coming to Animator's Palette are these cute little bread knives. These have been around since the fantasy and the dream set sail, and they have been stolen many a times. You can actually buy these for, I think, $10 in the gift shop. First up, we have the porcini spaghetti. I know it's really blue, but I promise it's just the lighting in here. <laughs> Next up, we have the white cheddar and broccolini soup. Dinner has arrived. I have the schnitzel and I also got a sirloin. I apologize for the blue. I don't know why it looks so blue. Yeah, it's, 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 it's these lights that are like RGB lights. They're really weird. And ladies and gentlemen, our dessert has arrived. This is the amaretto cheesecake and Coda got the peach tart. Spider-Man! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> wow, it's so white, holy cow! Little Mickey Ghosty! I think this is the literal definition of playing with your food. Koto wrote her name in her sauce. <laughs> and as we leave Animator's Palette, we have puppies on the floor. If I recall correctly, these only light up on the second night during animation night. 
but it's still really cool. It reminds me of the old school Epcot fiber optics in the grounds. All right, Coda, what do you think? Dolphin. Dolphin? Dinosaur. Let's go. Let's see. Let's find out. <laughs> I left it. <laughs> <laughs> we were both wrong. <laughs> when have we been right? <laughs> Um, I don't know. Pirate night. <laughs> yeah, honestly. It's a frog. <laughs> and this is the kind of thing that gets Coda really excited. <laughs> you guys want to know what amuses me the most about the days where we do a back-to-back -back at Castaway Key? Is that we have nowhere better to be. So we are turtle pacing through the ocean right now. A couple days ago, we were full speed ahead, cruising. And now, we're coasting. <laughs> We are making a little effort. We're probably just doing donuts in the water, honestly. But still, what a gorgeous evening. Oh my God, look at that. Beautiful. Current time is 7.30 in the evening. And yes, I am first in line for the Walt Disney Theater to watch Frozen. Now, I know some of y'all are probably judging me, but you know what? Frozen is my second favorite Disney Cruise Line show. It's so well done, always a fun time. And the Olaf that is performing in the show is my favorite. He was our Olaf from our November cruise. He did a really good job. I'm super excited to see him perform again. So yeah, second favorite behind Beauty and the Beast. Don't judge me. <laughs> also, while I'm here waiting in line at the theater, I say line as if there's a line, but while I'm here waiting at the theater, Coda is running around completing the rest of her midship detective agency uh, mystery, and hopefully when she gets back, she will have completed it. Well, I'm gonna fix Donald's feathers because we like to slick back our feathers for a formal night. There we go, slick, 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 Looking good. Oh yeah, bow ties looking good too. Current time is 8 p.m. and the line stretches all the way down the hallway on deck four. And right after I filmed that clip at 8 p.m., they opened the doors to the theater and we are in the front row. <laughs> Okay, we just got done with Frozen and we had to run over to the tube because a game show called Seriously starts in about 10 minutes and we also have the ventriloquist doing his adult only show right after that. So space in the tube is quickly filling up. Unfortunately, we weren't able to grab any seats or anything closer to the front so we are in the very back of the venue so I don't exactly know how much we're going to be able to show you but hopefully I can show you something. If not, I'll just let you know how it was but let's go ahead and talk about frozen that was incredible it's always such a good show olaf as always steals the show and one cool thing that we learned yesterday is that about 90 percent of this cast is like first time ever performing this on the cruise after they got done with the auditions and rehearsal process on land 
these guys came on this ship with us and they are fresh out of the classroom. So huge props to them. They did a phenomenal job. And again, the show is fantastic. Something I have to reiterate, make sure you guys get there early, as early as possible to make sure that you guys get a seat because we constantly see families, particularly ones with small children and little girls showing up at the last minute and they can't find a seat. And the children are always disappointed to end up having to get a bad seat on the side. So don't let that be you. Make sure you get here early and make sure you see Frozen. It is definitely going to be the most popular show of the entire voyage. Um, here's the next question. Who snores the most? Thr <laughs> right, well, I didn't say three, two, one, so sit down. Yes, sit down, sit down. Uh, Justin and ja Jana, sit down. So my only competent couple. <laughs> Who snores the most? Three, two, one, shoes in the air. <laughs> what? Laurie just looked at me and said, we don't snow. <laughs> what do you mean, agreed? <laughs> when was the last time you slept together? <laughs> Who is the most likely to go commando? Three, two, one, shoes in the air. All right. <laughs> We've got a match, a match, and a match. <laughs> Jan, how do you know that? All right, ladies and gentlemen, and with that, that ends day six of our Disney Cruise Line adventure. It's day six, right? Yeah, we have two full days left. <laughs> we have one more day at Castaway Key, and then we are in Nassau for our final day. But the Nassau day is going to be very interesting. But you guys are just going to have to wait until that video comes out. I'm not going to ruin the surprise just quite yet. But I promise you, it's going to be awesome. Unless that thing doesn't happen, in which case this is going to look really dumb. But anyways, so that could sad. I'm going to be very sad <laughs> if the thing doesn't happen. But anyways, guys, that is going to conclude this video. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. Leave a like if you enjoyed and drop a comment down below let me know what you guys thought of today's video as always thank you so much to our incredible patreon supporters without you guys this kind of content would not be possible if you guys want to support us on patreon and get early and ad free access to all of these videos go ahead and hit that link down in the description below i hope you're all having a wonderful day morning afternoon evening and i'll see you guys in the next video tomorrow ah, welcome back ladies and gentlemen to castaway key Day two. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back on board the Disney Fantasy for day seven of our Disney Cruise Line vacation. Now, on a normal basis, day seven would mean that this is our last full day on board the ship. However, this is an eight night cruise. This is the longest cruise we have ever taken, and we still have a full day tomorrow at Nassau. And if you saw yesterday's video, then you'll know that we are teasing something very special, which we hope comes true on that Nassau day. But we have a second day at Castle week key today today is going to be a lot more fun a lot more active we're going to go out we're going to do some snorkeling we're going to head on over to serenity bay have some lunch over there and tonight is pirate night so today's video is going to be a lot more jam-packed and a lot more eventful than the last couple of videos but anyways guys let's head on off the ship head on downstairs and get to castaway key round two you know every time we get off the ship i always forget that there are showers over here by the aft elevators once again another gorgeous day at castaway key with no None of the excursions getting canceled. And as always, as soon as you get off the ship, we do have a map of Castaway Key. Make sure you stop over here and get a feel for what you're getting yourself into and plan out where you want to go. Welcome to our beautiful oh, island, Castaway Key. In just a few short minutes, we'll be arriving at Scuttle's Gold Tram Stop. You should disembark here for Scuttle's Gold Children Program area, Montreal Point Famous Whale Skeleton Day. Castaway Rays thing Red Adventure. All right, we just got our spot along the family beach. As you guys can see, it is nice and empty. What time is it right now, babe? 10.37. 10.37, not bad. Not bad, nice and empty. Typically, if you're doing a double dip on Castaway Key the second day, it's gonna be a little bit more of a slower day. People are definitely slower to get off the ship. All right, now that we are all squared away on the beach, it's time to put the camera away and switch over to the phone in the waterproof case. Hopefully, we can get some good footage out there snorkeling. If not, I'll just reuse some old footage. But either way, let's go.
we are back at Serenity Bay Barbecue. We have a cheeseburger. I have some garlic aioli on there. We have some ribs. We have some ribeye steaks. I have some quinoa salad and a sweet potato and purple potato salad as well. And there's some mashed yuca down there as well. So babe, remember when we were here on our last double dip cruise and we ate at Serenity Bay? Do you remember what happened? We got all the steaks. No. The storm that hit us in the middle of our lunch. <laughs> we were huddled in under the umbrella trying to protect our food. <laughs> that was crazy. All right, yesterday I showed you guys what was available to eat at the family beach over at Cookies. Now let's show you what's available over here at the adult only beach. Over here we have some jicama slaw, quinoa salad, sweet purple and potato salad. We have cucumber and pineapple salad, as well as some burger toppings. You have your lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, and onions all in one thing. And you have your potato chips. Next door, you'll have an assortment of different buns. You have hot dog buns. Um, I don't know what those buns are for. We have um, some more, these two buns are the same. We have hamburger buns over here as well. Over here, we have our ribeye steaks that they're grilling up. We have yuca mashed potatoes, so it's not regular mashed potatoes, it's yuca. We have coconut rice and beans. Over here, we have our guava glazed barbecue pork ribs. And up top over there, you're gonna have your chicken and your cheeseburgers. Towards the back over here, we have our fruits. You guys can take a look. I think these are mangoes over here. I'm not entirely sure, they're not labeled. And then we have different sauces. Over here is where we found our garlic aioli go ahead and put garlic aioli on your burger. If you're a fan of garlic, do it. Trust me, you will not regret it. And over here, we have our different desserts. We have cookies in here, banana bread over here, brownies, and Johnny Cakes over there, which is basically cornbread. All right, Coda, what kind of concoction did you make? It's cookies and what is that, chocolate ice cream? Mm hmm. Very smart. Okay, so we left Serenity Bay and we made it back to Pelican Point. Now, something that I haven't spoken about recently in the last couple of Castaway Key videos that we've done, um, if you're trying to get to Serenity Bay, you get off the cruise ship and you get on the tram, your first stop is gonna be at Scuttles Cove. You're gonna wanna stay on that tram and come over to Pelican Point. That's where you're gonna get off the tram and wait for another tram that specifically says Serenity Bay. I showed you guys in the video. We went over there just for lunch. I highly recommend it if you're an adult over 18 and you want a really good lunch with some good ribeye steaks and even better burgers. Like, in my opinion, the burger quality at Serenity Bay is a lot better than what they have over at Cookies 1 and Cookies 2 on the family beaches. It's just worth it. It's definitely worth it. Drop your kids off at the um, kids club over here and go to Serenity Bay and have some lunch. Worth it. All right, sweetheart. Are you satisfied with your time here at Castaway Key? Until we come back in like four months? Our next cruise is in January, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back very soon. But in the meantime, let's go ahead back onto the ship and maybe do the Aqua Mouse. Aqua Duck. I, I have been getting it wrong this whole time. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> you know, it's absolutely wild that we've already been on this ship for seven days and we're not even going home tomorrow. We still have one more full day. That is insane. I love these longer cruises, man. Also, take a look at these guys over here. They are painting the ship. That's something that I love and I will keep saying that I love about Disney is that they are always trying to maintain their ships to make them look as good as new all the time. Uh, yes, cold towels. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, that feels glorious already in my hands. Let me put it on my head. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love it. This feels so good. Woo wee. Oh yeah. Very much so needed. I know we missed this yesterday, but we also have some ice water over here for us. Yes. Excellent. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we made it up to the top deck. It is time for us to experience the Aqua Duck. We don't have a GoPro, unfortunately, so we can't take you along with us. But the good news is we don't have a GoPro to lose on the uh, Aqua Duck. <laughs> if you guys want to watch that video, I'll leave it linked in the description below. Alrighty, made it back into the room after a ride on the aqueduct. And we have our Pirate Night bandanas. It's really nice that on the old ships, we still get free bandanas. Wish, I don't know what's wrong with you. We're probably not going to get anything on the treasure either. But 
that's besides the point. We move on down further into the room, and this is how you know the cruise is just about over, unfortunately. We have our tips sheet over here. Now, every stateroom is going to get this. If you didn't prepay ahead of your cruise, then these amounts are going to be charged to your account, so make sure you guys pay attention to that and plan ahead. If you did prepay, then you don't have to worry about anything. You can tear each of these little slips off and put them in here and present them to the people that are labeled. And if you want to put anything extra, you can also do that as well. Ah, so long, Castaway Key. We will see you in about four months. And now we begin turtle pacing our way over to Nassau. It's always a real shame how it's only on Pirate Night that Treasure Planet gets any kind of representation in Disney media. Like, what the heck? They have concept art cycling in Animator's palette of Treasure Planet. Such a good movie. You guys should definitely watch it. All right, guys, so as I mentioned earlier, tonight is Pirate Night, and we are making the decision to have dinner here in the main dining room. Now, historically, Pirate Night dinner menu is not our favorite, but we're going to give it another chance, another fair shot, see if we can find something that we actually enjoy on the menu. Um, Coda is dressed up more like a pirate than I am. I unfortunately did not bring my pirate hat that I wore when we were on the Wish, but I promise you for our next cruise in January, I will be dressing up like a pirate again. But either way, let's go ahead and take a look at the menu. And here is the Pirate Night dinner menu. Let's take a look. So up top we have our specialty cocktails. Down here we have our appetizers. We have a vegetable samosa, some marinated shrimp, a crab cake, and a beetroot carpaccio. <laughs> For our soups and salads, we have a carrot and cilantro soup, a chilled mango soup, which is basically a smoothie in a bowl. You have your orange and quinoa salad and the baby gym. Down here is your bread service, which is some Johnny Cakes with mango dip. For our main courses, we have the sea bass. We also have a grouper filet, jerk chicken, a lamb shank, and a strip loin. And here are your vegetarian and lighter note offerings. And our appetizers have arrived. Both Coda and I ordered the crab cakes. Next up we have our soup course. This is the carrot and cilantro soup with banana bread croutons. Entrees have finally arrived. I got the lamb shank and Coda opted for the strip loin. And just in case I didn't like the lamb shank, which I don't remember if I liked it last time, I also got just the strip loin. Dessert menus have arrived and it looks like a little pirate ship in a bottle. Let's go ahead and take a look. We have a Bounty Fruit Cobbler, we have a Bananas in Paradise, a Rum Soaked Chocolate Cake, and a Pirate's Treasure Sundae. Over here for our signature, we have a Caramel Macadamia Nut Cheesecake Tart, and for no sugar added, we have a Coconut Creme Flan. And our desserts have arrived. We both got the Fruit Cobbler with ice cream. And we made it up to the top deck to get ready for Mickey's Pirates in the Caribbean Deck Party. Ladies, welcome Mickey's Pirate Parade!
away, 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 the wretch is waiting for you. Come on, you bring the buccaneers, come live the life the pirates like. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come live the life we love. With a sword in each hand, we're about to see far away land. Away, 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 come live the life we love. Well then, you party and pirates, now, in your loudest voice, answer me this. Who will be the leader of the crew? I hope so. If it's not, I'm gonna lose my mind. It is! <laughs> Look! With the eyes and everything. You know, we assume that this is Davy Jones, but I've seen a lot of other vloggers say that it's something different. What is 
I don't know. They've just named everything else under the sun. Like they said octopus, which I mean, they're not wrong. But I've, I've I've seen them say other animals too. I can't remember, but they definitely haven't said Davy Jones. I call him Davy Jones. You know, I'd I'd like to think that it's Davy Jones, especially with the eyes, being the doubloons and everything. You guys, let me know. What do you think it is? You will expect to be alongside in a sow tomorrow morning at around two a.m. I repeat, you will be expected to be alongside in a sow tomorrow morning at around two a.m. Thank you for your attention and please continue to enjoy your evening at sea. Now I am passing on the microphone to our team director Steven for more update about the evening event. Thank you very much indeed, Captain McKelly, for your updated information. We have now increased the ship's speed at full speed, making our way through to Nassau. Due to the ship going at a higher speed, unfortunately, we are not able to offer our fireworks portion of the show tonight. Oh, no. However, Buccaneer Blast will continue as scheduled this evening, but only the show portion on deck. We will have the opportunity to enjoy the fireworks tomorrow evening, and we have scheduled this opportunity for 7.45 p.m. Once again, due to the high speed current being experienced in Disney Fantasy, we are not able to offer our fireworks display tonight. We will continue with our Buccaneer Blast deck show, and then tomorrow evening we'll have the opportunity to enjoy the fireworks at 7.45 p.m. Thank you very much indeed for your attention, and do continue to enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, I knew that was going to happen. Hopefully they're okay. Yeah, absolutely. Safety is definitely paramount, but it, you know. So, I haven't had the opportunity to talk about this, but during our, during our dinner at Animator's Palette, there was a medical emergency. Someone went down behind us, and someone was yelling, help, help, help. And, yeah, we had medical and everybody go. Uh, to animators palette and the captain came over the intercom and said uh what was the what was the code bright bright something bright side something like that it was like bright side and you know he called it to animators palette so yeah we had medical and everything like right behind us at animators palette so they had that and then i wasn't even recording like in the middle of the character show the mickey's pirate show oh, yeah. they made a second announcement for the bright side code in enchanted garden so that's two people now that had to get serious medical the serious medical attention like within the span of two hours yeah. so it's not surprising and i hope that they're both okay i mean but obviously it's serious enough oh. that they need immediate medical attention that we're having to book it to nassau yeah i'd rather miss the fireworks than have have that happening and just be like haha this is fine <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely Aww. their safety is of the utmost importance but it is still unfortunate it is. but it's fine yeah. it's sure. fine yeah and if anything because we're going to be in palo tomorrow night for our final night can we see them off the back duck we may be able to that's what i'm trying to figure out like if in the middle of the service like it, I, I doubt they're gonna do like the full pirate buccaneer show i, I think they're just gonna have everyone up on the top deck and just say here's the fireworks look like maybe we can step out for a few minutes watch the fireworks and then come back in i'm sure that's the thing that they could do right hopefully or hopefully they no they launch towards the midship so even though we're not getting the pirate fireworks tonight, one thing that we completely forgot about that we are both looking forward to is the pirate buffet. So after the show, the pirate buffet opens in Cabanas. It's supposed to open at 10.30. I assume it's going to open a little bit earlier because there's no fireworks, but there's some really good food in there that I am definitely looking forward to trying. Pirate buffet. Pirate buffet. Hi, Rip a thing. Hi, Rip a thing. I'm not seeing anything. Well, we were lied to. That's what eavesdropping gets you. I know. There's no pirate buffet. We heard from one of the head servers talking to another table that there was going to be a pirate buffet. And that's what we thought. We thought there was going to be a pirate buffet. So we were so excited to come over here. But um, turns out we were wrong. And quite possibly the head server was wrong. So that's... It's rather disappointing, but it's fine. We're here next to Sweet On You. Let's go ahead and get some specialty ice cream. You ready for that? Okay. 
She loves ice cream. Let's go get some ice cream. So over here at Sweet On You, we have a bunch of specialty treats that are not included with your cruise. All of these do cost extra. Now take a look at these. We have some different cupcakes and cake pops. We even have some macaroons, chocolate dipped strawberries. They all look amazing. We have some other options over here. A pack of macaroons. We have some specialty cookies. We have some chocolate dipped Oreos, some marshmallows. Oh my goodness. Along with the snacks and the different cases, we do have some other treats here as well. We have some lollipops. And over here along the back wall, we have a bunch of other snacks that you can find in the theme parks as well. Milk chocolate caramels, malt balls, almonds. You have your gummies over here. You know, you know. Yeah, these will make you poop. <laughs> <laughs> Just to put it bluntly, these will make you poop. Like there's even a dis like a disclaimer on Is the really? back of the packaging. Yes, it's got laxative properties. <laughs> yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Consumption may cause stomach discomfort and or laxative effects. So yeah, <laughs> if you're gonna eat that. <laughs> just um have one or two at a time but you have some other specialty popcorns over here some more lollipops you even have your shortbread cookies these are really good i highly recommend them as well and last but not least we have our specialty gelatos over here way too many to uh to, to name but opposite side over here we have our different ice creams take a look at that we have cookie dough Vanilla rainbow sorbet or sherbet, however you pronounce it. All right, so we are drowning our sorrows in ice cream. Koda, what did you get? I got coconut ice cream with sprinkle covered chocolate chips and Mickey sprinkles. All righty. And I got cookies and cream ice cream with rainbow sprinkles and gummy bears. Why didn't you get Mickey sprinkles? Because I don't want Mickey sprinkles, I want regular sprinkles. <laughs> and on the way out, Coda decided to hide another duck here in the corner. So whatever family comes here in the morning, they're in for a nice surprise. All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is just after 1 a.m. and we are approaching Nassau. We have a pilot boat over here and it looks like he's going to swing on over to the ship. So that way we can pull into Nassau. If you guys watched yesterday's video, then you know we had a medical emergency on board and we had to rush over to Nassau so that way we could get this individual off the ship and get him the medical attention he needs. And uh, the captain said that we would be arriving around 2 a.m. but it looks like we got here a little early, which is a good thing. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but they are partying it up over there near Senor Frogs. It's definitely not Senor Frogs where the music is coming from. That's Senor Frogs right here and the music and party is coming from right over there. It is a Friday night and it does look like we are in fact hitting a 180. Yeah, they, they shoot a little tiny line out for them to grab and then they pull the rope. So you'll see the rope leave. There's the that other one. That was the other one. I see the string. Oh, those must have been the pilots. Mm, I was going, where the hell did they come from? And there they go. I hope that individual has a speedy recovery. And we wish him all the best. I'm glad we were able to get him here quickly and safely.
And as you guys can see, it is a lovely morning out here. We are parked next to another cruise ship. Don't exactly know what line that belongs to, like what the brand is. You guys can let me know down in the comment section below. But take a look at this. Take a look at that rainbow. You can see the rainbow going right over here. It is drizzling a little bit. So that's why we have the little rainbow, but that is quite a sight to wake up to. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to day eight of our Disney Cruise Line vacation on board the Disney Fantasy. Unfortunately, our last and final day. We are docked in Nassau today, and it's still going to be a very fun day. Even though Nassau is typically a sea day for us as we normally stay on the ship, we do have a reason to get off the ship today because their new port area just opened, and I do want to get down there and explore it and show you guys what all they do did to the Newport area to improve it over here in Nassau. Plus, we have the Disney Magic Park next to us, so we have two Disney ships docked in Nassau at the same time. So we're going to go downstairs, get plenty of pictures of both ships right next to each other, and of course, we have our final farewells tonight. Let's go on upstairs to Cabana's and grab some breakfast. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, our final breakfast at Cabana's for this voyage, and... We have a view. Take a look at that. We have the Disney Magic parked right next to us. And it's raining again. Unless they're pressure washing. They might be pressure washing. Either way, I am so excited to get out there and get some pictures. As always, cleaning and maintaining the ship. Take a look at that. Never a dull moment. <laughs> a little bit of behind the scenes on the Disney Magic. Take a look at that down there. That is the crew only area they have their own dedicated space and dedicated pool outside take a look at that right there that is a covered up canopy and that is their little smoking area completely out of view from guests on their ship unfortunately not out of view from us but it's still really cool and take a look at those swinging chairs over there it's cool that they have their own dedicated outdoor space on that ship. And we had one of the crew members over here on the Fantasy say that they're jealous of the crew members on the Magic because they have that space and they don't over here on the Fantasy. You know, it really puts it into perspective how much larger the funnels on the Fantasy are compared to the ones on the OG ships like the Magic. Look at that. It's so little. <laughs> I mean, granted, we're not that much taller than them, but like overall size, yeah, they're a little baby. Holy jeez, she works fast. We were gone for like, what, 30, maybe 45 minutes, if that. She came and cleaned our room, goodness. So we just got into an elevator and take a look at that. I found my second duck. I found a duck. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I found one. It's a cool one, too. It's got little sunglasses. Oh, well, look, you found a Dr. Zimmerman's. And it squeaks. <laughs> wow, guys, take a look at that. In between two Disney ships, we have the OG, the Disney Magic, and the Disney Fantasy. Holy cow, this is a special moment. This, this doesn't happen very often, so this is very cool. And take a look at that, guys. Over here in NASA is going to be the best place to get the best view of Dumbo on the back of the Disney Fantasy. Look at how close you can get. That is awesome. So this spot right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the best vantage point for getting a picture with both ships in the shot. Take a look at that. The Disney Fantasy on the right and the OG Disney Magic on the left. Coda, is this cool or what? Yeah. It is amazing. So many great photo opportunities. And you can tell guests from both ships, the Magic and the Fantasy, are out here interacting with each other, talking to each other about their vacations, and getting pictures in between both ships. All right, that's enough picture taking for now. Let's head on into town and check out the Newport area. So I have no idea what this main building is over here. Last time we were here, it was under construction and behind a bunch of walls. But take a look at this giant screen that they have right here. Wow. That is so cool. A little 3D effect.
Okay, so we have made it out into the main area and we found out that this building right here is a terminal because it's not uncommon for cruise ships to leave out of Nassau where they start their journey. So it makes sense that they would have an actual cruise terminal here. So that's what that is. And this building right here is a welcome center. You can see we have a little directory over here that shows where everything is and what everything is. So that is awesome. I cannot wait to explore further. Look at that. We have a museum over here as well. That's really cool. They have a bunch of security out there. We have tours and a taxi service area over here. And now it's time to head on into the port marketplace. This is so cool. They basically gave a whole dedicated area for these vendors to sell their stuff. And then of course we have a few other high-end businesses over here with their own massive dedicated stores. And as you guys can see, not everything is quite yet complete. They are still doing some construction in the process of moving in some other businesses. But so far, right now, I am thoroughly impressed. This feels like a very nice outlet mall almost. Well, that's something you don't see very often. Take a look at that. Three Mickey funnels. <laughs> you know, you might as well. Okay, Coda's walking away. <laughs> I was going to say you might as well get used to seeing multiple funnels because the Disney Adventure out of Singapore is going to have four funnels <laughs> all on one ship. And wow, guys, take a look at this. This is a giant amphitheater that they have constructed out in this cruise port terminal area type thing. This is amazing. There's so much room for activities over here. You can see they have the lights all set up, a giant shaded canopy. This is amazing. We had a feeling that this was gonna be an outdoor amphitheater a couple months ago when we were here in January and this was all still under construction. But this is awesome. This is really nice. I admire how much money they sank into this, into improving this area. This is a huge, huge improvement and makes Nassau a lot more inviting for passengers as they get off the ships. Oh my gosh, guys, and take a look at this. It keeps going. Look at this park. Oh my gosh. There's so much green. I love this. This is gorgeous. Oh my God, I cannot believe this. Bravo, Nassau, bravo. All right, babe, so first impressions, what do you think of this brand new port area in Nassau? It's really nice. <laughs> They did a really good job. They sank a lot of money and a lot of time and years into this project and it paid off for them. I am thoroughly impressed. Wow. And take a look at this pier area too. You have multiple docks over here for multiple smaller ships. I guess if you have any excursions, you could, you know, sail out of here and take a look at that. Senior Frogs is right there. This definitely makes it a much more attractive walk to Senior Frogs. I'm not quite sure what this building over here is going to be yet. It looks like it is roped off over there, so we don't exactly have access to it. But hopefully the next time we are back here, which may end up actually being in January. I can't remember if our ship stops in Nassau, but either way, uh, the, hopefully the next time we're back here, we know exactly what that is. Okay, so we figured it out. Based on the directory, this is called the West Marina Restaurant. So hopefully the next time we're here, we can actually dine there. I would actually do it. Would you, babe? Sure. Yeah. Do you know, does our cruise in January stop here in Nassau? No, it does not. It does not? Really? Oh, no. Then I have no idea when we're going to be back here. Do we come back here on our Lighthouse Point cruise? I think so. Think so? Yeah. It might be a, it might be a stop. Who knows? We might come back here then with Peter and Kitra. And take a look at this, guys. They even have a dedicated ground transportation area as well whole bunch of different parking spots for different buses and other vehicles in case you guys have an excursion or somewhere to go you can pick it up right over here i also want to point out that along the way there are multiple ways to get in and out of this port area so you have the world famous bahama straw market over there easy access to get over there across the street and back over here into the port area and take a look at this guys from this angle you can just barely see the fourth funnel on the fantasy Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I never in my wildest dreams thought I would see the day with two Disney ships docked side by side. Let's go ahead and check out one of the larger, more dedicated gift shops. Wow, check this place out. I'm actually very impressed. They have a whole bunch of little knickknacks and things in here that you can buy that say Nassau Bahamas. Ooh, take a look at that. For you Dole Whip fans, they do have a Dole stand over here with multiple different flavors. <laughs> So in addition to everything else that they have here in this brand new port area, they do have a brand new museum of Junkanoo. So if you're interested in checking out some of the local art and history of the area, you can go inside over here. It is $11 per person to go in and explore. All right, guys, one last look at the Disney Magic Park right next to the Disney Fantasy. 
before we head back on board. Definitely enjoyed our time here in Nassau, exploring the Newport area. That was a lot of fun. I love how next to the gangway they have a little sign that says Disney Fantasy because, you know, darn well, some people are going to make that mistake. Current time is just before we're at 2.30. We were supposed to be on the ship by then. We're waiting for a possible horn battle. Hopefully it happens soon because uh, that is a lot of rain out there. And that's cool. You can see some of the crew right down here on the Magic waiting for us to depart as well. And for some of the crew on board these ships, you know, being docked next to each other is an even bigger deal than for us as passengers because this is one of the only times that they get to see some of their friends that work on the other ships as well. It's a time for them to possibly reconnect for even just a little bit, even if it's just a brief wave across the way. It's still a good opportunity for them to see, you know, people they love and know. Starting it off nice and easy. long Nassau until next year, June of next year to be more specific. Oh my goodness, check out those waves over there, holy cow, crashing over the rocks, that is wild. And with that my friends, the cruise draws closer and closer to the end. We are slowly but surely making our way back to Port Canaveral. And with that being said, unfortunately, the time has come. The thing that we have been dreading doing since we got on board the ship and first unpacked, now we have to repack the suitcase. It's always sad. Always sad. But I am very happy that we did unpack and actually put clothes away. It felt really nice. You know, we felt more at home and... I feel like we would have not liked it as much living out of a suitcase on these longer cruises. On a shorter cruise, yeah, fine, whatever. We will, you know, be more than happy to live out of our suitcase because if you're only there for three or four nights, then eh. But an eight night or seven night, yeah, it's best to, to unpack and situate yourself a little bit. Let's go ahead and get that done. Well, guys, I know that it might be a little difficult to see, but that ship right over there has two red funnels, and we suspect that that is the Disney Wish because it was scheduled to be at Castaway Key. 
So it's entirely possible that that may be the wish. It's definitely not the magic because we left them in the dust in Nassau. And there's no way they caught up to us that quickly. All right, fit check for our final evening. We're having dinner at Palo tonight and we're hiding the rest of our ducks. Each of us have three ducks. So we're gonna go down to the atrium. We're gonna hide those and then head on up for Palo. All right, we have made it down to the atrium. Time to hide this duck. And I do believe I will be hiding it over here behind Minnie. Take a look at that. I love this atrium statue. Minnie, on top of the Disney Fantasy, definitely my favorite. We're gonna go ahead and put the little ducky. We're gonna tuck him in right there. Right there. Incognito. Dakota being a little sneaky sneak, hiding her duck. Okay, we are on deck four. Our next duck is gonna go right up here. Okay, we're gonna go ahead, put this little guy. Whoop, come on, I need you to stand up properly, Mr. Duck. There you go, right there, perfect. And I know it is very difficult to see, but right over here is Coco Key. You can barely make out in the camera the very tall tower used for the water slides over at their water park. And right next door, we have another private island. I think it's called Stirrup K? Stirrup Key? Either way, I think it's for Norwegian, but we do have another cruise ship out there. Rather hard to identify. It looks like a royal, actually. And right next to the Walt Disney Theater, we are placing another duck right there on top of the wait time board. Our thought process is a lot of people are going to be leaving the theater and they're not going to bother looking back at the time board. So hopefully this little guy goes to a nice home. And Coda's final duck hidden up here. And now time to hide my final duck on deck five. All right, that's it. All your hard work has been hidden. Hopefully they go to nice homes. All right, we made it up to deck 12 and we are ready for Palo. Unfortunately, our table isn't ready yet. And to be fair, we are here just a little bit early. So they asked us to hang out here in the Meridian Lounge. This, in my opinion, is a hidden gem, if you will, on the Disney Fantasy. If you're someone who enjoys the bar scene and enjoys, you know, drinking alcohol, this is always a very quiet place. There's hardly anybody up here all the time. And it's got some outdoor areas that allow smoking as well. So if you're into that sort of thing, the Meridian Bar on deck 12 aft is definitely the place to be. All right, time for dinner at Paolo. Let's go ahead and take a look at the menu. So unfortunately, as I mentioned the last time we were here in Paolo, the prices did go up. This is your prefix menu where you have your appetizers, your salads, your entrees, and your desserts. That is all for $50 and we get into the a la carte items you have your appetizers your salads and your soups you have different pastas and pizzas down here we have our other main entrees and your vegetarian options and here are your steakhouse options and sides and first things first we have our amuse bouche this is a potato gnocchi with some parmesan cheese on a bed of porcini mushrooms pureed porcini mushrooms just a little something to get you started before the appetizers next up we have our bread service this is the garlic pesto pizza with some other breadsticks and um breadsticks <laughs> all right our appetizers have arrived i of course got the fried calamari and jumbo shrimp it looks really good and coda opted for the caprese so that was something a little different especially the last time i was here they never came out with a box <laughs> they said choose your weapon for this evening and it was just a box of a bunch of knives either white or black so i opted for black coda opted for white bride and groom you know it just kind of worked out that way but yeah they didn't even do that the last time I was here. Oh my god, guys. Take a look at this. This is the porterhouse. The most expensive thing on the Palo menu that you can get that isn't alcohol. Oh my god. That is a massive steak. And we also have some mac and cheese and some uh, potato puree. Oh my god. I cannot wait. I have saved up money for this. I've been looking forward to this all cruise. This is going to be good. And Coda got her steak off the prefix menu on a bed of potatoes. You excited, baby? All right, let's dig in. Oh, 
Always a sad sight when at the end of the cruise you walk down the hallway and everyone's bags are out ready to be taken down. And our very last towel animal of the voyage is a crab. I love it. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and take these and add it to our collection. And of course we have the very important comment card that you need to fill out honestly and truthfully at the end of every cruise. Uh, oh my god. We are back in the room from Palo Dinner and... Ugh, that's so good. It's so, so good. Everything was absolutely incredible. The appetizers were good. That was my first time ever having the porterhouse. Like I mentioned earlier, I've been saving up for a while to be able to afford that porterhouse. And I gotta say, that was so well worth it. It was cooked to perfection. It tasted great. And the sauces that came with it, ugh. It was amazing. Definitely a must get if you are a steak person and you can't afford it. And of course, that chocolate souffle at the end is absolutely amazing as always. The night isn't over yet. We're gonna finish packing what little items we have left in the room and then we're gonna go downstairs and get ready for the farewell show in the atrium. I know, do you have to ask Nikki Lee in the game to join us back in our beautiful grand staircase. Here at Disney Cruise Line, we have a very special way to say see you real soon.
guys, it's uh, that time of cruise, the very last night. It is time to remove our uh, beautiful door magnets, courtesy of Magical Day Creations. This particular video isn't sponsored by them, but um, we still like to give them a shout out for their awesome magnets. <sighs> Until next time, these will be put back up in January. <sighs> so long, A584. You are a great room. Uh, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately comes the end to another fantastic cruise on board the Disney Fantasy. These eight nights have honestly flown by so quickly. It really is unreal how quickly time flies when you're having such an incredible time. This is definitely going to go down as one of the most unique cruises we've ever taken. Not so much for the itinerary because I think that trophy goes to Alaska, but just for the circumstances of this cruise and everything that transpired. Although Hurricane Lee put a stop to our plans to go to Bermuda. We still had an amazing time on this Western Caribbean cruise and of course those medical emergencies, however unfortunate they were, they definitely kept us on our toes for this cruise and made it a lot more interesting than any other cruise that we've taken. I want to give a huge thank you and shout out to every single one of you guys who came up to us and said hi to us on our cruise. This cruise in particular really made me feel like I was a celebrity on board the ship. It truly felt like over half the ship knew who we we were and every day we had multiple people coming up to us saying hi wanting to get pictures with us and just thanking us for all the incredible videos that we had made on Disney Cruise Line and it really does put a smile on my face whenever I hear someone say because of your videos we booked this Disney cruise or because of your videos it helped us plan this cruise you guys really don't know how much those kind comments mean to me there were a few of you guys who basically said that I was a celebrity on board the ship and every single time my response was no I'm not a celebrity. I'm just a guy with a camera who loves going on Disney cruises and sharing my experiences. And I honestly just want to help you guys plan the most amazing vacation you can. And I want to help you guys have the most amazing experience possible. I want to thank you all so much for watching this video. And for those of you guys who watched the entire series, I want to give a huge thank you and shout out to you guys as well. These videos, no matter how long they took to edit, were so much fun to create. And you guys already know, I am counting down the days until our next Disney cruise which is coming up very very soon in january of 2024 where we're going to be setting sail on the disney dream for a five night marvel day at sea cruise if you guys made it to the very end of this very long video let me know that you guys are the real mvps by leaving the word cruise down in the comment section below as i've said in previous videos guys leaving a comment down below really does help out the channel in so many ways and it helps youtube know that this video is actually good if this is the first video you've seen from me and you want to see more cruise vlogs i'll have a playlist link down in the description below to not only this cruise but for every other cruise that we've taken on this channel if you guys enjoyed any bit of today's video please help us out by leaving a like on it i would greatly appreciate it also if you want to see more content like this in the future and you're excited for our january marvel day at sea cruise please go ahead and subscribe to the channel it's completely free to do and you can always unsubscribe later i hope you are all having a wonderful day morning afternoon and evening and i will see you guys in the next video